or fiddle okay. stuff, and this is what the fuck you do. What are you doing? <laughs> what the I told you I was starting, you? nigga. We uh, talked about this. I told you we Why? started. Why? Nah, Why do you think doing uh, this? Look, I'm about to rant over the trail, intro. Uh, Why? Aga. Why? Why Jason, you keep it up for the movie, sir. Like, 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 the door of Malaysia, we just call him that. Right 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 I guess we're doing this. I guess this is the new tradition to talk over the intro. That's why I always do this. Let's just mute the intro. We'll just keep talking with him. We won't do none of this. Mixed reception wise. To be a woke is to be woke. Yeah, I understand. This part gets me all motivated. The sufferings of others. I don't even know what you're saying. I'm rambling in the background of the audience. Are included in being woke. You gotta be included we got in being woke. We got rambling over here. here. People don't even know pitch. what woke actually yes, means. Yeah. It's terrible. I'm trying to tell them. 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 We can use it to DMT. Yeah, I don't know how to do it. 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 Tell the whole <laughs> world about it. Uh. <sighs> Welcome, people. Welcome to the Discord Voices from the East Side oh. Show. Yeah, do that. Be live. Do that to a woman. That's me. Um, <laughs> see what I tried to get out before we actually went live. Get drunk, get get drunk, get go free. Oh, man. Right. Across a hundred and ten street. Uh, I'm trying to find a woman this week. Um, Bobby Womack. Bobby Womack. He got one of the most <laughs> ain't shit nigga songs that I've ever heard. Which is, I wish I, I wish he didn't. Trust me so much. Where he's basically singing a song where he's like, "Damn, I wish my friend didn't trust me so much because he knows I'm about about Johnny Hathaway." Yeah. And the situation with him and Sam Cooke is just—it is—it is a lot. This man married Sam Cooke's widow, then cheated on the widow with Sam Cooke's daughter. That is the next. That's some next top tier shit niggerage right there. I am. I'm a nigga that's not shit. That, that is, is that is some bullshit. That is. Like that, and, you got and, dead beats that can only aspire to such levels of savagery. Yeah, and his the 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 lady, uh, the former Mrs. Uh, Cook, Miss Barbara, uh, she she yeah. shot at him. She she actually shot at him because uh, their daughter was seventeen when Bobby Womack and her had their little affair. So yeah, it is it is wild. Like yeah, it's. Shout out to you, Bobby Womack, because goddamn, nigga. We don't shout yeah. out to his ain't shit ass. Damn. Like, yeah. That's so. <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome to the Get song around. from the East Side. Get around. Put on that Bobby Womack. Oh, no, girl. We're going to take it way back. Oh, yeah. Check back. this shit out. Uh-huh. Dog. Yeah, I remember that it's, shit, dog. That was, my, that was from one of my I, favorite fucking movies. MTV used to start that bitch off real nice with, with that. And the wood come on there, drop the fucking record. And it's like, back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. But some days I just wish I was a kid again. I remember way back when. And everybody say, nope. I remember, I remember way back when. Bro, I advocated I'm for just, that to be my graduation song, and time. nobody wanted to holler at me. Huh? <sighs> I'm just here for a good time. We're all here for a good time. It might not be for a long time. But let's have um, fun. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, our show ain't going to be as long as this goddamn movie for the week. Bro. <laughs> bro. So, um, I don't have any other audio because apparently my fucking card is not working. Um, I, I, uh, so, uh, Velvet Freight Train for the week. I know we were supposed to do this whole thing because... It was JT's birthday a few days ago. So we're going to first off give a round of applause for this guy. Um, JT, take a bow. Gotta break. celebrate our brother. Take a, take a bow, motherfucker. It's your birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Gotcha. 
Um, with that, I still gonna be very, very nice. We're gonna still, we're gonna still be as positive as possible. JT has been a fantastic Velvet Fur Train. He's been doing a really good job at making sure to uh, give us a, a voice of reason every week. He's done amazing jobs by making sure to try to encourage us every now and again when, when he steps out outside of himself and he decides that like, hey, you know what? I might do the right fucking thing today. So with that, uh, JT does that. Uh, and he does grace us with the, the imagery of Nacho and Xena every now and again. JT does a lot of things. He's a loving husband and he's somebody's son. Uh Jamel, help me, bro. <laughs> well, you, you are struggling. JT, you? Like, what? <laughs> JT you is a great me like, in person, dog. Like, yes. I don't know how tall he is. You know, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know nothing about JT. JT, JT. JT a lot of you things. Know. JT, JT. He is a great, JT, in all seriousness, he is a great person. Yes. Uh, he comes up as a very loving husband, a dedicated son, and yes. he's an integral part of what we do yeah. here on the Strong Voices. Yeah. Always offers the voice of reason. Yes. Always has a great perspective, and yes. JT is just—he—he's an all around, all around JT. So happy yeah. birthday! Happy yeah. birthday to that dude! And and um, happy, what's up, Andrew? Uh, my man is happily thirty-five and alive. So I I give it to him, man. And happy birthday to you, man. Happy birthday, man! Round of applause for you, bro. I, I promise you. Well, thank you very kind. I do, I do, and uh, uh, with that, um, I do have to have a fucking honorary. This is more personal, man. For me, uh, me and Jamel were kind of talking about it before the stream. Uh, a very honorable mention um, is a uh, fucking uh, Bray Wyatt just passed away. I know JT, you could you can take a side step on this one. Uh, but Bray Wyatt, uh, to me, will go down eventually as a fucking rest wrestling legend. Um, he's been uh, a fantastic character. He's been a fantastic Bray wrestler. Wyatt? Bray Wyatt, B R A Y W Y A T T. Um, big dude with a big beard. Big dude with a big beard. That was part I of his whole gimmick. If I've ever seen him on TV. If you ever seen old wrestling, they used to have a wrestler named IRS Man. And just a regular guy and some suspenders, and he fought. That's his son. So um, he just died. I'm looking at a couple of websites right now and saying it's a heart attack. 36 years old is too fucking young. Um, I know we've talked about other people who passed away, but I think that this is a little bit different. This is more of a come to Jesus conversation for a lot of people. It should be. It's because of the fact that 36 is too fucking young. Now, uh, we did have Terry Funk pass away yesterday, which, by the way, he deserves it because of that, that too, is a Velvet Freight Train. Because a lot of the wrestlers that we have today, yeah, we would not be able to enjoy that person if it wasn't for the, uh, if it wasn't for the fucking innovation that that man uh, created. Terry Funk is not only a, a, like a gimmick wrestler, but also on top of that, he was a professional wrestler, bro. And he made a lot of people be put on the spot. And he did a fantastic job as a wrestler. Like, lived to be 79 years of age. A yeah. beautiful age to live to. Yeah. So his grandkids, his kids grow. And the reason why Bray Wyatt, his death is poignant. It's it because 36 years, it's not just COVID. Because, hey, folks, COVID has gone nowhere. Mm -hmm. 36 years of age and a father of four children, two very young. Um, it's whether you're a fan of wrestling or not, that is that is an insanely young age to pass. And the older I get, the more I realize how young some people are when they pass. Like I think it was years ago when uh, I've gotten like my late twenties when I realized how young Tupac and Biggie were when they were killed. And it's just like, man, yeah. life and the when concept and the idea of tomorrow is not a guarantee. So sincere, yeah. cherish the people that are that you're close with. Tell your family every day when you can. Tell them that you love them. Treat people right because you don't know if you're gonna make it till tomorrow. You don't know if you guarantee to see the next day, the next week. So yeah. be as good a person as you possibly can. Be as decent a person as you possibly can. Cherish 
tears from you up. So yeah, that man. That is this, a pretty good, uh, man. Rest in peace, Rest in peace yeah. to Bray Wyatt. Rest in peace to London. Yeah. Um. With that. Um. I'm a try Let's get into some happier news. Yeah. yeah. I'm a, I'm trying to be as positive as possible throughout the rest of it. But like that is my because modern. Y'all saw in, in if y'all saw in the group chat, we yeah. got some mug shots today. Yeah. Join us. We got some ugly ass mug shots with some ugly ass people. America's mayor, president, oh, they're five. Got. Got got processed in Fulton County in Georgia. Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani. It is yeah, okay. hilarious to see. It is hilarious to watch. JT, what are your thoughts? Let's kick things off with you, uh, the, the birthday man. What kick things off? How how happy are you to see the birthday some progress, Mary's some justice yeah. being the, the the wheels of justice as slow as they turn? Can yeah. start. Yeah. The wheels of justice will be the rack which breaks Donald Trump's back. Agreed. That is our only option, or else we as a country are screwed. If we can't come back from the the absolute disrespect that this motherfucker brought to the White House, then I honestly don't want to live on this planet anymore. So let's see what Mars is doing, y'all, if if this don't work out. But you got to understand that this is a, based off of a RICO case. So they're saying y'all operated like a crime family. Yes. The way you moved and stuff and did things, y'all didn't have no formal meetings and keep minutes and talk yeah. about stocks and stuff. But the way you was doing was greasy, like you was organized. And when you got somebody who's like, yeah, I'm the president, but you know, I get a secretary of state. I got my daughter. She'll do good. She'll go talk to them. Yes. That sounds like a crime family to me. So it this it, people just don't let their logic go to the top. They want to they want to react emotionally, and if you just look at Donald Trump's mugshot, it's hard not to because it's yeah. awfully funny. <laughs> just look at him looking pissed. Oh, like oh, I was supposed to be. I I robbed forty billion from you Americans, and you put me in jail or what? However much money he embezzled from this country, but still, it, it's really it, it gives me hope. Yes. Because this shit should have happened when he was in the White House. They should have cut his presidency short and gave whatever the VP guy with the fly on his head's name is. He is so useless. That guy can't even be like, nah, man, I'm not going to support Trump. That nigga tried to have me killed. What a little bitch, Mike Pence. Ah, um, Not really pleased with him. Did y'all watch? Did y'all catch any of the Republican debate yesterday? I heard it. I didn't watch it. I heard that Ronda Santos did fucking terrible. Yeah. Ronda yeah. Santos shot us up. In the Actually, I really wanted just... to bring that up too, real fast. Um, and that was like one of my statements that I was going to bring up. Man, I feel like fucking streaming has really hurt us when it comes to the information bubble. How do yeah. y'all feel about that? Because I would have never known about that unless I was like still trying to do some shit for fucking like media. Like the only thing that I knew about came out yesterday was Mortal Kombat released the first 17 minutes of their fucking gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> Based off of that. But you and didn't hear kind of, none of this other stuff that was bro, yeah. Important. And that's Actually kind of important. exactly. And that's that's I think that that's a problem by and it's a diabolical sounding one by the fucking like people who bring you like Facebook and Twitter, right? Because it's algorithms, algorithms, algorithms. But the I'm, algorithms aren't programmed to give you the truth. Truth, That's yeah. So and I you think you know, like you got to have a little news in your algorithm. You got to have a little, you know, puppies in your algorithm. You got to have a little cupcakes in your algorithm. You got to yes. have a little weather in your algorithm. But Correct. no, this fuck is just like all you do is click on puppies. That's yeah. all you get now, and it just feeds yeah. you more of what you already react into. So yes. really what you could argue is you could say that you need more like news based, more facts in the algorithms that people are presented with. Because um, it's easy to get a meme and put some shit on there and say that this is happening. And when you put some bold words in front of somebody, some celebrity's face, you, people automatically think the celebrity said that mess. I seen Morgan Freeman with so many quotes floating around his head. Come yeah. on now. So that's, I'm going to say, a- I'm going to say this. Um, I got to give one compliment to X and um, AKA Twitter, Twitter dog. We don't call it X on this program. We don't have to respect the name. Right. I, it's not I a person. As is because you mean some people may identify it as the unknown. 
So with that, or the number 10, whatever, how you want to put it, place it. But uh, the artist formerly known as Twitter, uh, the, the platform for me. <laughs> so I will give it to this. Uh, I've been watching a couple of like the feeds on there, man. And they had this one feed and um, they were showing this video of like um, Joe Biden. He grabbed this little boy's face. He And it looked like he's had his hand over his mouth and he put, pulled his head back. And then he was kissing on his forehead. And um, some people were posting like, oh, how much of a pervert he was and shit like that. And then um, Twitter now has this thing where it's uh, now trying to start fact checking in some form or fashion, in some weird kind of way. And so basically they fact checked and they said, no, this is an image, a video of his grandson. They were in the middle of the funeral for Joe Biden's son at the time. That grandson was the kid of the son who passed away. He was just trying to like console him and kiss him. And so when he grabbed him, it was kind of a bad placement, but he was kissing on his forehead and because he was and he was just talking to him and let him know it was okay. Sounds but like he's a good grandfather. He was okay. a good grandfather, yeah. So sounds like he's a pervert. That's what it's saying. That's that's what Look, he's that's an old man. Said. I tell you what, people yeah. moved very different back in the fifties when he was, you know. Yeah, his knees up. were original. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but this this mug you got he's like eighty, y'all. He's yeah. so old. Yeah, and this is one of the problems that Jamel was actually talking about. We got all these old people running our country, Correct. and they think they remember when you know, oh, it was only thirty five cents for a dozen eggs back in the yes, day, bro. and things ain't like Dianne that anymore. When, it, when a dozen eggs is over three fifty, mm -hmm. Diane Feinstein and my grandmother are the same age. Diane Feinstein, the oldest senator, U.S. senator, she's 90. She was born in 1933, five years before chocolate chip cookies were invented. Chocolate chip cookies, the basic cookie that you don't even think of, you think that shit's been around for, she's five years older than that. And a few weeks ago, recently, she had to give power of attorney to one of her daughters. That. Yeah, that's the same lady. She is still a fucking power U.S. senator. Power position. Yes. Oh, it is ridiculous that we don't have term See, limits, that we don't have age limits. Like, why? Look, See, I get age with age supposed to come wisdom. But in my opinion, once you hit 60, bro, you can't be elected to nothing no more. You can't be yeah. selected to have a, a position. You are, that is average age for retirement in America. You have worked. Enjoy your money, enjoy your grandkids. You can be a counselor, you can be an advisor, you can be a consultant, you can be a mentor and be a source of not. You can't have no elected office if you were around before color TV. If you were around when it was still ice boxes were just common before refrigerators, if you were around when that new when, when fucking Dick Clark was considered that new kid on television, if you are if you can remember fucking First season of I Love Lucy when it was just ah that was the, that that new show I yeah. Love Lucy that brand new show you are too fucking old to be a senator <laughs> or have any <laughs> access to the launch you can't be that you what can't be a Supreme Court you. Justice my nigga these, if these people, fucking Court Jester was a, a fresh fill nigga. when these people was was around hell yeah nigga if you were born before Brown versus Board of Education. Your ass don't need to be nowhere in any type of office. Sit your old ass down and go go be some, go be a grand a great grandparent. I say what I say. I'm no, no, I respect that. Cut that shit off. Cut it off. I respect right, that. Man. That's why I said like when it came to um oh my god man what's Cornell uh Cornell West running? I was like I'm like yo that's dope, but this dude is old as fuck too. So do you really want to do like who probably got to go to like Best Buy tech support to learn how to unlock his own phone? I What's would take the oldest fuck dude because the constitution is old as fuck too. So he probably at least knows how to work that. <sighs> no, man. If, we need to be able to shower is going to endanger you from being present. Joe Biden yeah. failed last week. Me, that's, that's what, what I'm saying. saying. Nah, man. Get you a shower um, mat, bro. So then cool. Then if that if that was a, if that was an ideal world, then right. 
then make your VP be that old dude, right? Have that un. But that then we got to change laws and Congress because, because exactly the president but, gets capped, and, and now we got uh, now we got old old McGee who remembers when fucking Temptations was that new hotness when they were, he remembers the Temptations when they were still Otis Williams in the Siberians. That's how yeah. old some of these people are. So for Cornell West, I think he has knowledge. I think that knowledge is extremely valuable. I think his opinion is extremely. That is somebody that folk music was a top four. Not necessarily in a in an elect in an um elected position. That is a counselor. That is a wise. To borrow a phrase from professional wrestling, that is a wise man. That's somebody that you lean on. We can do yep. And we we, we gotta we gotta start getting some of these old people out the paint. We can't Mitch McConnell old ass, this fucking dehydrated Franklin looking motherfucker. We can't have this dude in, in Congress no more. We can't do. Yeah. We can't do that. Auntie Maxine Waters, you have fought the good fight. Please, like it, it, it's time. It, yeah. It's time. We got to get some of these. You. We got to also. And I, I saw Candy and I saw Andrew point this out. We got to be careful with the youth that we get because you you don't want to fuck around and get a dumb young person like uh, Marge Green. Good, yeah. who, I'm I'm not sure if that bitch can spell her own name. So yeah, we, yeah. we got to be careful, but. <laughs> I, I, that woman makes fence posts sound intelligent. I don't know how that's possible, but she does. And yeah. like, I, I, but like her and Bobert, man, like these people are so stupid. It's pretty obvious that they just go and say the sound bites and they're like, yeah, oh, all these sound bites are working great. And then the problem is like they get in office and as opposed to pivoting and being who they really are, they're like, no, no, no. I was about those sound bites. Yeah. But like, all right, but like, what are your actual like stances? Are? No, 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 the soundbite bullshit. They stole the election. Let's get them with the Jewish space lasers. What Which the hell? Stole the election. Uh, so look, look, and you gotta, you gotta understand that these people come. The Republican presidential debate. They had uh, eight people up on the stage, I believe, and they asked them how many of y'all would consider pardoning Donald Trump, and six of these motherfuckers raised their hand. Including Mike Pence's bitch ass, so I'm already not a fan of Mike Pence just for like dog. You have no, you have no dick, bro. Your wife got in a mason jar somewhere in her purse or something. Like you, you <laughs> ain't a man, ho. Use a hoe, Mike Pence. All oh, testicles in the country. Yeah, think me style. But like for real, dog. Like just, you're not wrong, Andrew. You're not wrong. But it really frustrates me when I see these people. And there, so much of the debate talked about Donald Trump, and the motherfucker wasn't even there. And so, like, why you got his dick in your mouth so hard? He needs to go to jail. He's old news. We need to talk about the new you know, where the red Republican Party is actually going. We didn't get none of that. Yeah, because the Republican Party is now the party of Trump. Trump. Yeah, and that's the that's kind of like the the weird thing is the fact of like. You would have thought, you know, the sad thing is, like, I don't think want... he's really bitch made. Like, you were, they took, they could have, they would have killed him and his family. But you, yes, you're that bitch made to be like, I'll pardon Donald Trump because he knows, right. oh, if I that's the only way that he's gonna get elected. I believe your cat would be a, a more qualified presidential candidate. Like, I, I yeah. trust him more. She will be. That's fair. Yes, so, uh, with that, man, um, if you want to oh my bad i forgot i gotta add that shit too and it was supposed to be a timer um don't forget man if robert you, f kennedy jr jesus yeah. christ yeah Car yeah. carry that a little bit more little bit. i'll say this and before we get too deep the yeah. one thing that i will kind of aside on him with he is on some conspiracy theory shit the only thing that really is like conspiracy theory that i can rock with is anything related to kennedy getting shot because yeah, that seems like something that the government probably would have covered up. But this nigga is like he is he is loonier than a tomb. Like yeah. Daffy Duck at his worst is not as fucking goofy and loony as this nigga. But yes, like, so, who knows? Maybe maybe the sun will go out and you know that'll that'll cause the apocalypse. Who knows? It, it's just man, it's so uh, um, but. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, as far as like, so the funny thing is that like, 
we have these guys who are running for uh, running for these offices, and you would have thought, like, okay, cool, maybe, maybe we got to get a strong Democratic uh, candidate, but we don't have a strong candidate, even for that, and then because of the fact that we're leaning so much on Joe Biden as well, and don't nobody want to lean on his ass, and nobody want nobody's yeah. supposed to be one to lean on him, and so there's no checks and balances. It's, it's Bruh, and you you would have thought. But hey, hey make sure you try. Is a little too strong for him. But uh, if you're watching a stream, man, if you or uh, you know somebody else that has an opinion that they want to express about the actual uh, recent uh, like debate, as well as also the election and stuff like that, please call the number 504-356-3266. Again, 504-356-3266. We go ahead and put that up on the screen. Yeah, uh, fuck. Yes, if you don't mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna copy and paste it. Please just write that real fast for me, man, because uh, I am not able to reach that as quickly as I'm supposed to be. Um, so it, yeah, it was supposed to be uh, what you gonna call it. Um, where where is our unofficial moderator? Uh, Wakia Andrew. Five zero four three five six three two six six. Shout out to Wakia. Shout out to to Andrew. Yes, and thank you. It was Andrew, and I'm gonna say this uh, just real quick. Andrew, whenever I do live streams of wrestling, Andrew always always to, shows up. Always, uh, much, always supports. Always comes to the club. Right, we the we are a part of the Rest of You Weekly crew. So shout out to Andrew. I, I always yeah. appreciate that. Man. You five said five zero four five zero six. What three five six. So 504-356-3266. Didn't you call it last week? Probably the owner. Yeah, 504-356-3266. Yes, he called it last week and like in the middle of his voice of reason from what I remember. <laughs> he called it. I was he was that talking and then he was like this. But yeah. Was and then, the ring up in there. Yeah. So uh, with that, man. What else uh, we got on tap to talk about today? Uh, what, what else has happened in the news that y'all want to yeah, show the mug shot, man? Show the mug shot. Pull that one up right, t- right quick. Uh, one time. Um, yeah, which I'm one? Sure. America's yeah, mayor or uh, Tangerine Tyrant? All them, bro. Tangerine Tyrant, aka Future Orange Bitch in Prison. So, wait, wait, it, wait, wait, it bro, is bro. fascinating. We got to take a moment to take a like a uh, a, a, a RIP for. For Kid Rock's like self respect, dog. Uh, did you see what he just no. did? This whoa, whoa. <laughs> Kid Rock self respect. That shit died. Um, that when, died a long when time. You switched the rap. When he that shit was. He I'm not country. sure if his his, his self respect is. That shit was still born. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. That shit. Is, is Bruh, did you see that shit? <laughs> Uh, Did you see that, dog? What him right. drinking the Bud Light? He did the, the, the drinking the Bud Light. After shooting after doing uh, a few views to the Bud Light, he was sipping on it. Duh. Like wow, Kid Kid Rock, Kid Rock being a hypocrite. Wow, Kid Rock is I a hypocrite. Shot. They got T-shirts already for the mugshot too. That's what's so wild. Um, the internet is it, quick. Yeah, the internet it's is quick. quick. Y'all remember how fast people were getting shirts made at a uh, at a Rumble. Uh, Rumble. Like they were, it was a dude they had on the shirt of that the next day. The internet does not play. It is it is hilarious. And, 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 of course, old old Kid Rock, Clarkston, Michigan's uh, finest. Kid Rock, the son of rich ass people. Here, here's the here's the image right now. We're gonna we're gonna put that up for him right now. That's the image of of Donald Trump right now that we have. He <sighs> looks so. He looks so uh, frustrated. He, he looks <laughs> look at that. Look at how his ear doesn't have any of the orange gel on it. Yeah, he he, he looks. Get he that ran out close of his, his eyes either. Do you think he does his own makeup, or does he have somebody else help? He him? looks. Yeah, he looks so constipated. He looks like he's gonna is, be after eating that hey, food for a week. This is this is not yeah. the this is not the uh, the old folks home that he signed up for. This <laughs> this is not the care the care facility that he he wanted to go to. Is this particular place in fucking Fulton County, Atlanta, Georgia? He did not Terrible want this prison. life. He did not want that life. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find Giuliani's. Giuliani's is pretty funny too. Oh, was, I put it in the uh, chat. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Which, by the way, again, join our fucking Facebook group, y'all. Histor- historical voices. We be doing it's some shit. That is his makeup. Yeah. Is. yeah. 
Yeah, his, his makeup is too bad for it to be done. Yeah. So he does that himself. He's going to be, <laughs> he's gonna be pale as shit. Uh, if you ever see Harley Quinn uh, or uh, HBO Max, I just think that he's going to go to the same type of prison that Bruce Wayne went to. <laughs> Bruce Wayne went to prison for a fucking uh, tax evasion. See, Bruce Wayne went to prison for tax evasion. I just feel like he's going to go to the same prison. And his butler going to try to get arrested to try to go to the same prison so you can go to a you white collar prison. by the other rich white people. Yeah. by other rich white people who've been locked up. Mm-hmm. Charlton yeah. Heston Thaddeton the fifth of yes. the of the Charleston of the fucking South Carolina Thaddetons is gonna yeah. be in prison pressing Donald Trump. Yes. Uh, it's it's um, hilarious. But yeah, Mr. Richie, uh Robert James Richie, yeah. aka Body Shazam, yeah. aka Kid Rock. Yes. Um four months ago, Kid Rock made uh, Bud Light was doing some perform- uh, performative activism. They hired a uh, trans model or actress or influencer. I don't know what people do these days, but sponsored, which I'm going to say this. Um, no self-respecting gay person drinks Bud Light. Like, come on, man. Like, no self-respecting gay or trans persons out here. Bud Light, you get the Bud Light. Cosmopolitan? <laughs> nah, they, <laughs> gay people have more class. They might drink some Lime Marita or some other shit. So there's plenty of, you know, Anheuser-Busch. Trash. The, the white trash gay people might. The, the, the broke ones might. I, you know what? I take that back. The broke ones might. But mostly uh-huh. gay people have a little more pride in themselves. But uh, they hired someone, gave yeah. them a bag to promote Bud Light. Gay, trans folk, they, they look a little more pride in how they operate and how they get uh, famous. Kid Rock, he didn't find that shit amusing, and he um, was shooting at the, the cans, and hilariously, he didn't hit, he wasn't hitting them. He had an automatic weapon and was missing shots, and you can tell from, like, an off-camera shot, somebody else was shooting to, to get more of the shots on, so he was, you know, just doing a lot of performance stuff, you know, riling up that old conservative base, and uh, recently, we, we caught a picture of Mr. Richie, Richie Rich out here, uh, drinking on some Bud Light, and wow, it turns it turns out somebody who's performative with their politics is a hypocrite. Who could have seen that? Girl. A big ass fucking hypocrite, and that's what's so fucking Modelo. Modelo owned yeah. by the same company because everything it, it's 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 fucking capital. Dog, all these beers are owned by like two three companies, so. You gonna hit on one of them? It's it's so stupid him doing that, but it's so great entertainment. Here, here's the one thing that I will definitely say. It's kind of um when it comes to like those bars and drinks and shit like that. Like even the person who was uh, uh I want to say they were trans or they were going drag. I want to say they was trans for sure. The person that they were sponsored. They even said that they uh, that Bud Light did not do a good job by protecting them as well. So they took the actual sponsorship, but they thought that it was going to come with the actual kind of like reinforcement that like, hey, we're going to stand by you. And Bud Light was just basically like, yeah, you on your own. I thought you had your own security. You know what I mean? That's kind of fucking wild that this uh this situation kind of escalated so badly for Bud Light you know Bud Light and like Corona uh Corona beer had the worst like <laughs> 2020 to 2023 just possible just hands down in these past few years but let's uh move on to a different topic man it's JT what happened in the news for you homie in the news hold on yeah. let me check <laughs> Yeah, uh, Jamel, what's up, man? What, what Real quick, I've, I've been looking up uh, Mr. Richie's um, just some more details about him. Apparently, he has a sister by the name of Jill Richie. She's an actress. Um, she hasn't been in anything that you would consider like um, good, mm-hmm. like the best thing. And I'm genuinely serious. It might be either the 2000 film Ready to Rumble, which is notoriously terrible, or this uh, 2003, uh, 2004 film by the name of Debs that also stars Megan Good. Oof, that is not a that, that, that is well at it's all. Terrible. 
Yeah. yeah so go for it. she was also in Southland Tales, which is a notoriously bad movie that has a lot of talent in it. And it is, it's wild. The amount of talent in Southland Tales, it was directed by the person who made uh, Donnie Darko. He directed the, the movie. And it is, it is a hodgepodge of people in there. In Southland Tales, we got Kevin Smith. You got uh, your boy Wallace Shawn. You got Justin Timberlake, Mandy Moore, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Sean William Scott, and uh, Dwayne Rock Johnson. It is a weird ass movie. I've seen this movie. It is, it is a fascinating and bad movie. So one day, I'm gonna have us watch. No, no, never mind. I was gonna say we was gonna watch this. This movie was made on a budget of seventeen million dollars. Don't, don't Guess how much me. money this movie made? How much money this movie made, man? Well, I, I want y'all each to, to give a guess. Uh, JT, what's your guess? Man, I don't even know what movie we talk about, dog. I, I'm about Southland Tales. It's Southland Tales. Never heard man. of it. So I'll say it made five million. Nah, I'm gonna. You gotta, you gotta guess. Uh, I'm gonna I'm give this. Three, one, I'm gonna give this one an easy thirty million. Yeah, <laughs> on a budget of seventeen million, <laughs> this movie made <clears throat> three hundred seventy-four thousand dollars. Oh, three hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars. You know what? Let me correct that. Three hundred seventy-four thousand seven hundred and forty-three dollars. That is how much money this movie made. Wait, I know that we, we and this will be a fantastic movie if we get a chance to talk about it. If you ever, it was released. It was released, released the myth. nationwide. It was released internationally. It made uh, in its opening weekend. The, it was it made two hundred and seventy five thousand three hundred eighty dollars in North America during this entire run, and it made ninety nine thousand three hundred sixty three dollars when it was released in Turkey and the United Kingdom. Yeah, that, ladies uh, and gentlemen, that is so, what you call a flop. Yeah, if you ever see the myth at the very end, Thomas Jane does this cry of like I'm in sheer like distraught. That's what I would feel like as a producer. You brought what home of all the countries of all everything worldwide? Only 350? Dog, get the fuck out of here. All y'all fired. Your goddamn granny fired. Everybody's fired from this planet. Why did you make this movie? Tell me this is a cult classic. Please tell me, J- Jamel. Is this a cult no. classic? No. It's nothing. no. It's nothing. This movie is no- Everybody has distanced themselves. Justin Timberlake said, it's performance off. Shut up, Justin. Uh, shut your, your ass up. It's performance art. Dog, this is a terrible movie. This oh. man uh, must be stopped. Richard Kelly said, you know, in 2021, he said, I, he announced plans to develop and expand the film into a fucking... Fr- no. 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 He wants to expand it into a franchise. He wants to get the, the original gang back together. Hey, Dwayne, he's been... Uh, he's gotten famous. You, The Rock has made some flops. The Rock ain't stupid. He ain't getting near this. You think Sean William Scott is going to get near this? That nigga career is already uh, hanging on by... Uh, Dumb. Loose tooth. You think he's getting back in the game? Hell no. Dumb. This no. nigga, no, he must be stopped. It, it is dumb. Arrest him. You have to be over with. So, over. man, fuck. That's that's completely wild. Jesus. Um, yeah. With well, JT, you got your news, man. What's your, what's your news? <laughs> well, you know, Shakari Richardson tore it up. She is the fastest Hell yeah. in the world. Hell yeah. <laughs> Her, you know, we've been we've been kind of following her little tiff with marijuana and yes. other things for a while, and it's <laughs> nice to see her finally get out there and do her thing. Uh, when whenever you got somebody who's operating in their purpose and what their max mm. capacity is, and you see yes. people trying to stop them from doing it because they're too good, the people are usually black. Anyway, <clears throat> shout out to Shikari. Uh, you Growth, know, there's maturity, and success. That's what Shakari Richardson can do. Yeah. Congratulations. And, and, and you know what? She's an overcomer, man. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thoroughly. She, man. Ted, she yeah. is looking to tell them Jamaicans up. She took them getting in her face. And look, I feel weird 
uh, talking shit about other black women, even though they're Jamaican. But hey, uh, be like Jordan, take that personal and, and thrive. The Olympics is coming up. Go ahead and thrive and go for that goal. So, well, one of the things is I, I thought that she was going to bring this up, man. She's been actually also getting backlash. And the reason being is because of the fact that she's been refusing to do some of the interviews with some of the journalists and reporters. So they caught her on video, like a white reporter would walk up to her and she'd be like, no, thank you. But then when they have a black reporter walk up to her, she'll just do the full fucking interview as well. How do y'all feel about that uh, that perspective? Do you feel like she should have been doing the interviews? Or nah, you just think I that feel like she did the right thing? I can folk, and I, I honestly, it, I keep it 100 with you. Black solidarity don't make no sense unless black people all collectively decide to, to unify with it. Correct. And so, you know, to me, I'm like, why would you shut down, especially being a African? You know, why would you shut down anybody who is open to talking about your greatness? That's your that's your chance. You know what I mean? Yes. And so for Shikari to do that, let me be clear, is her choice. She can do whatever she wants. She can talk to whoever she wants to. Yes. But at the end of the day, you know, you don't know who got what in their Rolodex. So don't count nobody out. Yes. That's just how I treat most people, though. You know what I mean? But there's sometimes you can tell when some people come at you wrong. And that's, I think, okay to sidestep them conversations. And if a reporter feels like they're owed an interview, then that's absolutely not, you know, that's definitely a good time to pass on that. That's not something that, she, that Shikari should have to deal with. So, you know, maybe you should just be more respectful when you come up <laughs> instead of start asking questions, pushing the recorder in somebody's face. Hey, you got a moment? Can I talk to you? Yeah, so-and-so with ESPN or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if these people just come up, hey, Shikari, you had a great one. No, thank you. Yeah, you. like you, you know, she did it. like she, somebody who waiting in the lobby to hop on me for a soundbite. Yeah, but she, anyway, she I, did I don't that. know. I don't know these things. I don't know these things. What you think, Jamel? Honestly, I think I understand how some athletes feel when it comes to the press, when it comes to certain reporters, because there are certain reporters out there, certain news outlet outlets out there that have that goal of uh, having that gotcha journalism or have that goal of being not as uh, what's the correct term. Being not as a friend, being not as interested in the story and just looking for something controversial. So I do, on one hand, I understand where she's coming from, but also, like you said, you never know who's going to be your ally, who's going to be your benefactor in a lot of ways. And so that person might be black, that person might be white, Hispanic, Asian, whoever. You can't be dismissive of everyone, but if you can tell the bullshit is coming and just from a second talking to them, like, I don't need this. Thank you. I'm going to pass on this conversation. So yeah. be discerning with who you speak to because not all skin folk are your kin folk. For example, uh, Candace Owens, your, your, your man, uh, Clarence, Clarence Thomas. You know, they, they black like polar bears. You know, oh, but I'm gonna ask you a question it is like, what it is. And I'm going to ask you a question like that. Who you talk to, so that's just me. Do you think that that dynamic would be different, though, if they would have been in the same rooms with people who were just like them? Or do you think that they say shit like that or they behave like that because of the fact that they are forced most and well, not necessarily Clarence like perspective. Right. But um, they're forced into rooms where they have to be surrounded around people who are outside of themselves and don't think for the purpose and the benefit of black, brown or any minority groups of whatever like flavor or color that you like. Right. So um, do you think that that's why they kind of pop that good shit? You mean, me, I think it is. I think that, that it, a lot of it is kind of like a, um, one of those, these German terms that I used to hear, like phrases that I used to hear, you wear the, the mask that, uh, that helps you survive. So what do y'all you, you think? I'm a, I am a mask off kind of individual. I'm sick of wearing masks. I'm me and motherfucker. If you don't like it, get the fuck off. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, if you have to wear a mask, it's because you're trying to survive. You wearing the team colors that you think are going to get you accepted and not killed up in these streets. Yes. And it's like that in certain, you know, areas in America still. Yes. And you know what I'm talking about? You, a couple of them pop, probably popped in your head, you know, whoever mm -hmm. you watched, but 
that's one of the things I think is dangerous about this country is that you got some people who have, like they like, hey, nah, hey, you better put that mask on. You better make sure that, that you acceptable to these people. And I'm just so sick of that whole notion. People need to accept me who I am. And they need to do the same for you. And that's the reason we got so many people with, you know, having problems with other folks. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to accept you as a person because you don't know who you are. They're still a whole person. Yes. So you still need to accept them. So yeah. anyway, I'm a bad person to ask that question too, because you know my mask off lifestyle just ain't conducive to that no more. Yeah. So what about you, Jamal? Um, I think there is a lot of truth with JT. I think you know, just keeping it to America, you might have to. There are people who might feel like I have to switch that code around certain environments just to survive every day. It's a shame that some people, not just black feel that they have to do that. And I do wish we could live more of that. Sometimes it's about survival. And yeah. depending on your situation, it all depends on your situation. If you have to leave that situation because you should not be afraid, you should not be scared to be your full self. Yeah. Like you shouldn't have to wear a mask to live every day. The closet yeah. shouldn't be your, your environment where you're at. You should be able to be your full self, but some people feel that they have to do that either to survive or to excel professionally. It's why, honestly, it's why certain people in politics and why certain people in the corporate world act and behave certain ways. And it's how, you know, you keep doing that eventually, you're going to have somebody think on that O.J. Simpson thinking like, ah, oh, I'm not black. I'm, I'm O.J. I'm above that. I'm above race. And that's a dangerous mentality, and that's a very shameful mentality in my opinion. Yeah. Um, the only reason why I think that a lot of people do it because of the fact of if you have a person who is like, um, what's that heart surgeon that wound up working for Donald Trump? Um, what's his name? Ben Carson. Ben Carson. Who was, was like the fucking Steph Curry of brain surgeries. And yeah. Brain it didn't, it didn't seem like he completely flip flopped, right? Detroit's in his own. mindset I, and his beliefs, you know what I mean. And um, you know, the, the same guy that Cuba Gooden Jr. played at one point in time. So well, uh, there's a high school near my sister's house named after him. That was the former location of the high school I went to, Ben yeah. Carson High School. Like, yeah. <sighs> um, Andrew said honestly, when I was in school, I felt that uh, way until I realized that. I didn't uh, need to do that. You, and he's referencing to the like the mask on aspect of it. Now, well, I'm actually you're young. You feel like that anyway. You don't yeah. know. You oftentimes don't know who you are. And if you do, you, you're probably not comfortable displaying it. Yes. And you got certain kids who are out there doing it and they go dye their hair a weird ass color. Or they mm -hmm. just go wear black all the time and, you know, try to be all gothic. But Correct. there's a lot of people who are like, you know, I, I, maybe I like 10% of this, but, you know, that's not enough for me to dip in the, into there and, and hang out with the goth kids in the lunchroom or whatever. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it could be a challenge knowing who you are. But I think that's that is once you have your identity, that is one of the cornerstones that you can grab onto. And that's the truth that you can carry with you throughout the rest of your life. Yeah. And if you don't have that identity piece figured out, that's one of the reasons why people fail. Yeah. They just don't know who they are and they crumble apart. You yes. stand for something or you fall for anything, right? That's true. So yeah. um with that man, uh Jamel. What's that? We, it's have, we have our movie this week, man. Uh yes, we sir. are at 50 minutes into the podcast, and we got another 50 to go. So tell us about our movie, Jackie Fucking Brown. Let's let's do oh also yes, gotta make sure that got to also make sure you re remember this too. Call that number, write us on Facebook, YouTube as well. Next week is actually a uh, viewer's choice or community choice uh, for what our film's going to be, man. So, uh, I'm so far we've got to, Cool just Runnings that was nominated by Wakia. That's in yes. the discussion for movies that are coming up. So uh, go ahead. Let's pick out give us, give movie, us some man. choice. Make this choice. Make it difficult for us. Yes. To, pick out like, movie. Uh, give us yeah, let's give this it week we have the first entry, and I think this is the first time on, that we <laughs> ever blood in, blood out. Whew. Speaking of long movies, 
<laughs> there's a, a reportedly like a, a three or four hour director's cut of Blood in Blood Out. Oh, that God. is a saga. That oh. is a whole ass anime saga. So that's a, that's the first season. Yeah, that's that a is first season. Yeah, that is a whole first season. The whole first world tournament in Dragon Ball, bro. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Let's dive into uh, the movie this week. This is the first Quentin Tarantino movie that we've done here on the podcast. One of the, uh, what they call, our tour directors, one of the more renowned directors of the last couple of decades. But we aren't starting with his first movie, Reservoir Dogs. We aren't going to uh, what, what, what should be our favorite movie, which is uh, Django Unchained. Now we're diving into Smash Hit or uh, one of the more underrated or underserved hits from 1997. It is Jackie Brown. It is based on the novel Rum Punch by Elmore Leonard. It stars the legendary Pangria. Yeah. Just, just before we go any further, please give Pangria a round of applause. All right. Yeah, we'll, give it, we'll give it. We'll give it more. Sure. Velvet Freight Train Worthy. She is, in many ways, the first black female action star so recognize her it also stars robert forster we have michael keaton aka batman robert de niro bridget fonda and of course samuel l motherfucking jackson yeah. this is quentin tarantino's direct follow-up the second uh, uh third movie that he's directed in the movie after pulp fiction pulp fiction the movie that really solidified tarantino as one of those uh, generational voices as far as a director and a star director. It centers on uh, the one Jackie Brown played by the lovely Miss Greer. She's a flight attendant who smuggles money in and out of uh, Mexico on behalf of Ordell Roby, a gun runner in L.A. Ordell is just he is something else. But before we dive into the movie proper, um, let's get, I want y'all thoughts on uh, the two principles. Quentin Tarantino, real quick, JT history. I want y'all thoughts on Quentin Tarantino as a director, as a figure in, in film. So, uh, JT, we're gonna start with you, bro. What's your thoughts on Quentin Tarantino? Okay, uh, so listen, Quentin Tarantino has a good respect for black people, but he still don't know what it's like to be a black person. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like when, he, crazy. when he writes a movie, like, so this movie feels like it was made written by white guys. But they, it's got a lot of black people in it. You know what I'm saying? And so something about that, like even though they start off with the, you know, Cross 110th Street by Bobby Womack, uh, it, it don't feel like a movie that's for us, by us, like you know, even the photograph for crying out loud. And I think that that's something that's pretty obvious when you watch Quentin Tarantino's movies. He's got something okay. something that, that gives it a little more appeal. So in this movie, you know, the love interest is actually a white dude for Pam Greer's black ass. Yeah. So, you know, like it's 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 interesting, but it I don't feel like he always makes the characters feel like real people. And that's I think where Quentin Tarantino falls short. He got this is a character, and this character stays this way and does this. And that's kind of about it. And so yeah. Quentin, I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done, bro. Quentin Tarantino does a good job. of. I feel like he, he tries to make people feel like a character, but he don't make them feel like a, a living, breathing person, especially if they're ethnic. He don't really get into them shoes very well because he's too busy worrying about them feet. All right, what was you going to say? History? So, fuck, I love the fact that you, you, you slid that in because that was like... <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's one of the hardest things for me to watch a Quentin Tarantino film because the so fact that I know that like the older he gets, the more and more we are not going from here older. to my brother. This was present always, with the exception of Reservoir Dogs. This was present. He is letting me know. <laughs> I love I know, I'm saying, but the more that we no, get hey, older, didn't, didn't old girl press the silent button on the floor in Reservoir Dogs? Yeah. Uh, so we still had a foot shot. Yeah. <laughs> or like when you think about like uh, when you a think movie about that had all movie. that was a sausage fest. He found a way. Life yeah. found a way. <laughs> like uh, uh, Dustin, uh, Dustin Dodd, he had several Hayek's toes in his mouth and uh, shit like that. Yeah. Day. Oh, uh, man. That, that room, like I watched from Dust Till Dawn like a couple years ago. I'm like, damn. Selma Hayek is God bless, but then 
Quentin fucks it up. Like, that is like a chill. Like, like, that's like you getting a, a good plate made at Thanksgiving and out of nowhere a fucking chitlin is just pop right on your plate. Like God, the plate is ruined at that point. It's like yeah. I don't watch that no more. I'm here um, yeah, I, I want to say what's, going name? To what's, what's, what's her name? Um, yeah, uh, Julia, Lu- Julia Lewis. Yeah, Julia Lewis. Oh, her, nah. look, her look on her face in that film is about how I think a lot of us felt when he yeah, did that. Nigga. Like, if she was black, that was probably if she was black, she would be like, nigga, what you doing? So, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tailor, uh, what JT said from my perspective. I don't think that he has a respect for black people. I think that he benefits from black people. Um, which it's fine. I think he has a tolerance for it. Um, you think he's racist? I don't think that he's racist. I just think that he has like I just don't fuck with so those he people. has a respect for black people. No, I think that he you can have a t- tolerance and then also not hate something. You know what I mean? You can just like this film. Like I love movies, but this you mean not this film. I'm so sorry. I I, I don't want to give my rating away early. Um, but like there's movies that like I know that I can't fuck with. But if you like it, that's on you. Like I'm not gonna dislike you or think that you're trash because of it. I just know that I don't like that movie. So it's kind of like you can tell that like he bobs to the, like the rap music and the hip hop music, or he bobs to like the soul music. But it's only for him to get himself into character, to be able to try to think like that group, to be able to kind of just say that, hey, I exist in a bubble and make myself feel a little bit more. Quentin Tarantino seems like what Get Out was supposed to be about. You know what I mean? Like, he sounds like he's the kind of guy that'd be like, I voted for Obama twice. That's what it just I would have voted for him for a third term. I would have voted for a third Yeah, I actually see that. So I actually see, see where you're coming from. It's not the fact that I don't think that he's an asshole towards black people. I don't think that he's an asshole I mean, to these groups. I think that he definitely I mean, still kind of like what you said, JT, is a white guy who doesn't understand these groups and doesn't want to take the actual chance to understand these groups, at least enough to be able to write something that represents. He's like 60, so, you know. Yeah, he doesn't. Maybe he had 30 years after he made this movie to get his shit yeah. together. Who knows? Yes. So for me, I go oh all oh, right. Sorry, sorry. So when I when I listen to a Quentin Tarantino film, that's what I'm doing. I'm listening to the film after a while. Because for me, a lot of the films are not good. Their fucking dialogue is fucking gorgeous and amazing. And that was gonna lead to my question for you guys is the fact of we've talked about how some movies are quick with it and they're trying to be like jerks to make comedy, but also at the same time, they just don't feel like they're uh, going anywhere with their conversations. So whereas this one is definitely in-depth conversations, these are definitely character developing like scenes, right? He doesn't waste a scene when it comes to the dialogues, but it feels like he wastes the movie. Did y'all feel like that? For me, I think the dialogue is something that I always notice in Quentin Tarantino. Yes, um, like that was like that's his Perfect really audio. that's his hallmark. Like that is his, that is his dialogue. Like yes. you see in every like especially in Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction, and I think this is why most of his fans don't really latch on to this one in particular is that it's just these people having these long conversations, and the dialogue is good, but it's about like some of the I shit like. Uh, Reservoir Dogs, for example, has the opening diner scene where it's about tipping, it's mm-hmm. about Madonna's like a virgin, and this uh, the, some radio like program where they're talking about uh, all the music that plays. It is just a bunch of shit that's yep. they're talking about. Pulp Fiction, it's the whole interaction, the whole scene in the restaurant with Honey Bunny and Ringo where they're talking about robbers. It's the scene in the car with Jules and with Vincent. Uh, talking about the differences in uh, Europe and in America, you know, the cheeseburger shit, uh, Royale with cheese. That's mm-hmm. something that people don't talk like that. Yeah. Whereas I feel in this one, there's a lot more human conversation, particularly in my opinion. Yeah. With, 
something that Jackie you might overhear. And Max. Yeah. But it, and it's specifically about aging. And I think that's one of those subtle things of the movie where it's like you clearly see Jackie, she's kind of relaying fear and life is moving past me and I don't want to start over. And time is fucking me. And you see this in, in some of his other movies. And I think this is kind of a, a turning point because he doesn't necessarily rely on the black culture in Kill Bill. He does it in Django, you know, old school kind of Western type shit. And I can't speak on um, on uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but these first three movies have their own like '90s distinct feel, and you see it. They feel a little bit different than the other ones, and I think mm -hmm. the dialogue in this one. I enjoy it the most from a human perspective because it feels like he at least put in some effort to try and understand who Jackie was. And I think it's primarily because, and I do, I, I do see the point that you're making where it's like he doesn't necessarily understand black culture fully. He doesn't necessarily care about black culture fully. I'll put it to you like this. He's kind of a less problematic Kid Rock. Kid Rock, I think, when he was coming up, he kind of, he liked rap. He enjoyed rap. But he didn't have a full grasp and a full understanding of what the culture was. And now you see what he's devolved into in his later life. Tarantino, I don't think he's gotten to that point, but it, it doesn't go beyond uh, an appreciation or uh, I think this stuff is cool. In my opinion, it's he thinks black exploitation films are cool. He thinks Pam Greer is amazing. He, he had probably had the biggest crush on her. That was probably the first black woman he ever was saw. Was just like holy shit. Yeah. But I don't think he has a full understanding of the significance sure. of who she is. I don't think he has a full understanding culturally of what some of these elements are. So That's he's just kind of like my Paul opinion. Ryan. He's like Paul Ryan. When you know Paul Ryan, he used to uh, they used to say about Paul Ryan when he was the uh, speaker of the house, he used to play uh, what's it called, uh, Rage Against the Machine it, while he was inside of the actual, unironically, uh, huh? Unironically, <laughs> yeah. the point completely. Just yeah, like, oh, yeah, this is great music. This is talking different. about you, dog. They're talking about you, yeah. <laughs> So, um, or like, uh, when, um, like Donald Trump used to play Bruce Springsteen, like, you missed the point. Like, Donald, what's, what's going on, bro? How, how did you, how did you not get picked up at the bus stop at, at this point of time? Did you, That's were you late? These people don't, they don't understand <laughs> the message in the music. So, just, oh, this is a popular song. Yeah, I like this one. Play it. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, well, you mean, I, I got a great example for this, man. I had to tell my boss, and I think that they, Ooh, they, I got I had to tell my boss about this, bro, because of the fact that they were playing uh, Lizzo, uh, uh, Water Me. And I was like, do you know what she's saying? But she was saying that this is a family fun, uh, family friendly environment. And they were like, no, it's just a good song. I was like, you know, this girl is talking about getting wet, right? I, I, I just hope that you just uh, like grasping at this idea that that's what she's talking about. That's what she's saying. Don't water me. Don't get me wet. Like, that's what that is, right? And so as soon as I brought that up, that's when, like, about a, not even a week later, bro, the song stopped being in our rotation at our store. So, um, yeah, that's... Uh, you shouldn't have said I, nothing. You should have just let it play. <laughs> well, and then when, it when it a couple of customers well, walk in, look at the disrespect just... that... So this is the reason why. I, 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 because of the fact that I suggested other women they think because it was doing it for Women's History Month as well, and so I suggested other women songs that we can do for this. Like and it boys was my no, not like boys like, my like same girl. They did. <laughs> I love you. I, like, you you're my homie. <laughs> I, was, I had like four more, but I'm just gonna stop. Yeah. So they they did start playing like the fucking Brandy song, like um um uh sitting in my room and shit like that, and uh, my best friend and stuff like that. You know, like they started playing a couple of other songs, but I was like, you can play other songs. There's other black people you can listen to their songs. Do Lauren Hill, uh, Lauren Hill, do something like that. You know what I mean? If you want to do some black women and songs, you know what I mean? So I feel like that's what it is. It's just like they completely miss what the meaning is. 
and that's Mr. what we Mark was. Though. Yeah. Uh, Before we move the, on to the next, it, oh, go ahead, Jason. This is white people. If you are not a part of the culture, you don't understand the purpose of the ritual. Then all you see <laughs> is the ritual. <laughs> then all you go and do is go through the motions. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And some people just think that oh, I'm going to go through the WAP motions yeah. and it'll be okay because they don't even stop to consider what WAP actually means. Yes. And this is the this is the problem with uh, it's the problem with America, y'all. Is some people in America they don't feel like they have to share your culture to know about your culture. Correct. And that's one of the problems. And 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 you, this is the only country where motherfuckers are like, no, that's my culture. You can't have it. Yes. As opposed to, yeah, let's share my culture. You know so, what I'm saying? If yeah. I'm playing rap music for my white friends and they ain't saying the N-word, we're going to have a conversation about that. Yeah. Even if they do it a second time, we're not going to have any more conversation. You so, know what I'm saying? But it's you got you to gotta understand the reason behind it or you're going to abuse the ritual. And that's what we see happen a lot when our culture is shared. So I don't know if you've seen that, like recently um, they had an interview that Logic made um, and a lot of people kind of was like, oh, well, social media was like kind of trashing them because of the fact that he used the word nigga. And then, and so yeah, yeah, half nigga. So why can't he? I forget that Logic admits to me. Yeah, he's but half Logic half brings half. it up quite a few times, but I will forget. Like if he says nigga to me, it bro, is he, 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 bro, I swear to God. JT he like, says yeah, nigga to me and says it, it just Right, Pat. Logic says niggas like. Wait, hold up. Say? Hold up. What? So, like JT? Like, 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 <laughs> did you just call me boy? Like, oh my god, what is wrong with you? Logic? Yeah. No. yeah. I feel <laughs> bad. So I, I feel you... bad for some right. people, and I, I do. I sincerely apologize for the I feel bad for some people who are mixed race who have that, who have a little bit of that confusion or. Confusion might not be the right word, but it's a hard time really solidifying their identity. And I do yeah. feel bad in a lot of ways with, yeah. with them. I think Logic might have had some of that growing up, but uh, I don't know him and I can't attest to that. So it's just, I do feel, I feel sympathy for people who have that identity struggle. So, like, damn, I ain't, I ain't black enough for these people and I ain't white enough for these people. I'm just, I, I don't know what. I'm just me. Yeah, at, at this point in time, you got to just be like, I'm just me at this point in time. You take the so, mask off, show people who you really head. are, and if they got a problem with it, and you don't come back. But it actually kind of go, goes to my point in a second. So, Logic... Lo Logic had this um, this interview, and he said that like hip-hop music is like one of the only music where it doesn't cross over and stuff. Well, he's ignorant in that, that's, because the fact that true. that is completely, yeah. absolutely wrong. I don't know if he ever heard Run DMC and Aerosmith do a song together. That was in the 80s. Uh, maybe so, he doesn't know about Run the Jewels. Yeah, and he does definitely doesn't know about Run the Jewels. Oh, my God. Yeah, Run the Jewels, that's Eminem. Shameful. Eminem is a great example of that rock, that mix of like rock and rap into one thing. He's the only white dude that did it right. And Limb Biscuit and all the rest of them fucked it up really terrible. Hold on, hold on. You're gonna say you're gonna say that he's the only you like Mike Shinoda ain't here. Excuse me. Does Mike Shinoda like make as much as much money has as collision say, course, my nigga? Collision yeah. course. Did he make as nearly as much money as Eminem in his career? Is he uh, gonna go Mike down? Mike Shinoda of Lincoln Park. Is he did he make did, as much did, did the he, album did with Jay Z? Which Can had massive oh, shit. I have not heard of Lincoln Park in, 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 in a whole career. Shout out to Lincoln Park. Because, that, you know, that that Chester Bennington pass. Yeah, I'm going to say, I'm not disrespecting Lincoln Park. I know who you're talking about. Is he as notable as Eminem and has made as much money as Eminem? And the well, answer is. No, he was in a no. band. And so, as we know, when you have a band, then. Okay, just the so you're you, you defending money, my point. And that was. So, that was <laughs> so with that. Oh, uh, like that's a missed opportunity. That's a missed mark. So with that, I would say that like um, when it comes to like us as a culture, we also try to adopt many other people into our culture. And I think that maybe sometimes that's considered a flaw. And so like when you have that Korean store that's been in our like neighborhood for like the past 10, 15 years, we say, oh, no, nah, you're not Korean, you black. And so we disassociate them from their culture. And then we say we want to adopt you into our culture as well. So do you feel like that's what happened with 
a person like Quentin Tarantino in this Qu- film. Question, who the fuck does that? Oh, uh, no, no, you... you Bro, I've heard a not. lot of black people do that. I don't do that shit at all. Yeah, that is, because that is if you like if you're gonna, like if you're gonna do that a shit, then you like disregard the motherfucker in front of you. Yeah. That's the problem. And, and that's you're not also wrong with you doing it. I one last thing before we move on. I think the best way to describe some people is, and this is a shout out to another wrestler. Uh, there was a video that he posted. Some people eat food. He likes to taste food. Where it's some people will just consume culture without actually processing what it actually is. Yes. And I think that's something that um, you will catch people doing where it's like, oh, I listen to rap, but do you have any idea about the media? Or I'll watch yeah. some like Martin, I'll watch some like Fresh Prince, but not really understand or get the full nuance of what you're consuming. It's just, yeah. I just stuff that I'm, I'm eating the stuff that I'm absorbing. But are you really, are you really getting that full essence of appreciation? But we are, that's like when a white person will get the joke when we say, I didn't watch Friends, I watched Living Single. That's that's that kind of that joke. When white, it goes over their head when it comes to that. So yeah, I get what you're saying. Well, let's dive back into this movie. Um, and, uh, man, that, I, I appreciate where we went with that and discussing Mr. Tarantino. Let's get into the two primary leads in this movie. Samuel L. Jackson, motherfucking legend. How did y'all feel about his character? Yeah, huh? And his character in this movie and how it compares to some of the other characters that we've seen him portray. Um, in my opinion, Jules and Pulp Fiction, that is still top tier, Samuel L. Jackson. Okay. But this role, this fucking role, he has a, com- it's a combination of he's dumb, but he's also clever in a way. He's and stupid ruthless. as shit. Yeah. And he's ruthless. ruthless but he's also clumsy. Like there is a contradiction and a combination of so many things. It's just, and of course, Wakia brings it up. The wig work by whoever did that. The choice. I, I don't. I have never seen a nigga look like this in these streets. But I am glad Samuel L. Jackson went with that hairstyle, went with that fucking braided little thing in his goatee. Sam that Jackson. Is, that works. is Cali. That is West Coast, bro. History. JT, please. I want y'all to dive into. What did y'all think of Ordell Roby as the primary antagonist of this movie? We're gonna start off to history, and then JT, go ahead uh, add in as we as we move along. I felt like this movie showed that like you don't necessarily have to have a protagonist in the film, um, and I think that Odell's character definitely highlights that. Um, I felt like at points in time, like the whole I'm purpose, negative. huh? I'm I'm confused. Ordell starts off as what seems like the prototypical antagonist. He kills off your boy uh, Beaumont, but the film ultimately becomes shout out to Chris Tucker. Yeah, real quick, shout out to Chris Tucker. Um, I feel like he may have he may have just done this quick cameo around the same time that they was filming Money Talks. If you've seen Money Talks, he looks exactly the same in that yeah. in that movie as he does in his little four minutes here. So shout out to Chris Tucker. And Hobo, hobo. Yeah. Please So, what I mean by that is, uh, though, like the, the, the you don't need a, a real protagonist in a film is the fact that even though the m- movie is called Jackie Brown, I feel like she still was doing shit that was like an antagonist throughout the whole time. I felt like everybody, com- like throughout the whole film, was bad and good. So, um. His job was that he sold guns, right? And his whole thing was that, like, once I hit this goal of a million dollars, like, I'm done. I'm out this bitch. And I ain't going to let nobody stop me. And that's a mindset of survival. At least that. And I will give Samuel L. Jackson the greatest fucking respect for, like, actually making that a believable thing as a character itself. But then when you see later on in the movie, he's becoming kind of, like, broken kind of like what you said jamel like he did a really good job by being smart but dumb and so when you see that like jackie brown has kind of got him beat a little bit you see that more so in the middle of the movie like you already kind of got it that she's she's got him and he's already figured it out that she's got him that's why you have the scene where you see them actually in the same room together and so with that there was a lot of the sense of like hey we're doing this heist for this thing so we're stealing money from the bad guy. 
so are we not the bad guy? It kind of felt like Zagif off of uh, off of Record Ralph. Like, you I mean, just because we're a bad guy doesn't mean that we're a bad guy. And that's what I felt like for the whole movie. I felt like Samuel Jackson wasn't terribly, like, showing that he was a complete antagonist because of the fact that they had so many other people inside of this film as antagonists. Well, doing or at least showing that they were antagonists. But as far as his acting, I will say that this is definitely his top tier. He definitely does a good job with the... Uh, this is like the longest conversations I've heard him have. He was absorbing the wind out of the actual... This film, you mean? And it felt like I was watching Denzel Washington all over again off of Fences after a while. Because he was absorbing all the wind. And I love this one scene. I'm I wanted to see what JT would say about this. The fucking answer the phone thing for Melanie. How did you feel about that shit? That's <laughs> just need to answer the phone. That's how I felt. Yeah, <laughs> pick answer up the, the damn phone. Pick up the phone. Hey, they were like only like he was 10 so minutes. ignorant in this movie. Yeah, he was so ignorant. Yeah, so he he sold that shit so well, and I, I just I didn't for a period of time I got that he was like Thanos, but realistically, like I kind of was like. I hope this nigga figured it out in some kind of way because he was such a good fucking character in that one. So I will definitely throw that. That was definitely was keeping me kind of with the movie a little bit more was when Samuel Jackson was talking inside of the film. JT, what you think of or I don't know what the fuck you talk about with that. Ain't no protagonist shit. The name There's no the protagonist movie. in this film, man. The name There's of the none. movie was right there. There is not a protagonist. The one person who is trying to overcome and get to some freedom. It's Jackie Brown, so uh, like everybody else doing that dirt, and she is doing other people's dirt. She's trying to stop doing other people's dirt. Yeah, so if so, that, the, 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 no, you don't have your piece, dog. You don't right. have your piece. I don't need no right. rebuttals. Right. Man, right. <laughs> you done made your not sense. I'm gonna talk some sense now. Voice of reason up in this bitch. But like, obviously, the the whole thing about. Pam coming through and, and running the show is because her name is in the movie, right? But Sam Jackson stole the movie from her. And the funny thing is, Robert Forster was the one who got nominated for the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor when it should have been Sam Jackson. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. there's that part. But, like, Sam was... His, his character, Ordell, was, like, flawed because of who he employed. He employed a bunch of people who didn't make a lot of sense to him. They mm -hmm. was just the people he had around. So he's like, yeah, I got some women. I can take care of that. You know, they weren't the best ones for the job. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like our, our protagonist, you know, he didn't have a Jackie Brown up in his corner to help him out with nothing. So he had to do what he was told. Mm -hmm. And so it put him in a very interesting spot because he liked to consider himself a little shot caller or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was, at the end of the day, he was subject to the whims of our protagonist. Mm -hmm. And so even though he I'll tried, say this. Oh, sorry. sorry. You know I didn't finish the movie right. So, you know, even though he tried to get in the way, uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll see what the hell you're talking about with this. We, I'll say this. We, for. we know who we're rooting for. History, here's, here's where I disagree with the no protagonist. One, just because you're the protagonist of the story doesn't necessarily mean you're person. Everybody's trying to survive. That's what Jackie's trying to do. That's what Ordell's trying to do. And it has to do with that theme of time. Ordell talks about uh, in the beginning of the movie, he talks about uh, Mr. Walker, how he put Mr. Walker on. And now Mr. Walker is this big dude who's got his own boat and everything, and now he, he's you know trying to shit on Ordell a little bit. But Ordell has that goal of, I'm trying to get out. Jackie mm -hmm. has the goal of, dog, I have nothing. I fucked up back in the day with my husband. I am working on this shit airline for sixteen thousand dollars a year benefits. I didn't even look up how much that is in today money because I know that feels like that feels aggressively low. Like God, it was thirty thousand dollars. That don't sure. amount to shit. She's trying to survive. That is the protagonist and the main focus of the movie. However, Ordell is amazing in this movie, and it's it's honestly why, and we gonna get some. So we, we might as well get to him now. That's why Robert De Niro is he can't like Robert De Niro is an extraordinary actor. 
Ryder. He is an A tier, A plus. Nothing to work with in this. Raging Bull, Taxi Driver, Godfather. He is a fucking G. Mm -hmm. He gets no oxygen in this movie because he's around Sam Jackson so much. I do laugh in places with Lewis because he is a he is also aggressively stupid in a more the system broke him. It feels like the system when he was locked up. It feels like the system just all right, he's he's broken. And Melanie just pointing that out and, and that led to her demise. But Sam Jackson is amazing in this movie, and it's again the combination and the contradictions of who he is. He is a great character. But we're talking about her, we're bringing her up. Let's talk about the one and only Miss Pam Greer, legend herself as Jackie Brown. I want both of y'all to give your thoughts on Miss Brown and her performance and give your thoughts on Pam Greer's, uh, I call Pam Greer Jackie Brown. Give your thoughts on Pam Greer in this movie and how she portrayed the Jackie Brown character. History, why do you feel that she wasn't a protagonist? Well, I mean, obviously, um, I just think that it only makes sense that she wasn't fully a protagonist is because of the fact that she was essentially doing the same shit that Ordell was doing. She was trying to get this money that was from uh, Mexico so she could be able to kind of run off and do whatever the fuck she needed to do. The only thing different is Ordell, obviously, he was willing to pop a motherfucker for that actual that money, right? But she was also. She was sacrificing people for it, too. She got Max involved. Obviously, uh, some other people that was also involved with it as well. She didn't save Chardonnay ass. She didn't save nobody else. Melanie got fucking popped off. That ain't her business, though. That's the thing. That right. ain't her business. That's what that's the, but she knew Chardonnay was in there. So, no, don't say that that's out of business. That's not what a champion is. That's not what the, the good guy would do. That's just a person who's trying to survive. So that's why I said both of them were yeah. just people who were trying to survive. I think that she, they both, this was the best fucking anti hero version, I guess you would say, for this black exploitation. I think, I think you're doing too many mental gymnastics to get to the same point as fucking I think that you though. are being yeah, so yeah. simplified in the mindset of thinking about these characters. And also, nigga, you didn't finish the movie. So, with that, oh, uh, could possibly happen in the last aggressive. 35 minutes of the film to that make me aggressive. think differently. She, she, she unbutton your panties while you at it, history. You <laughs> unbutton my panties while I'm at it. Okay, I just say you need to um, change the little white lining at the end that catches your pee when you don't wipe that well. Okay, don't you stop that. God damn. You, hey, 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 hold on. Who wipes <laughs> their hey, yeah, you need to change your panty lining, baby. You need to change your panty line. Jesus Christ. Christ. Was that just Christ. a shitty I know you are, but what am I? Come no, on. No, that bro. was not. That was not. Look, you, you got something important to say. Are you going to come up here with some more about my panties, stuff? Dog. That was kind of like immature, first off. So no, I you told to come you back to unbunch your panties. Don't, you know, don't say this. I know you are what I would have buy. Jamel, lead this fucking podcast away. Go ahead. What's the next question? God damn. Y'all need to be. Like, damn, I thought we was trying. I thought we was lucky. Can't say we are. Oh, boy. Damn, just catty as hell. All right, let's get into some of the other less centered characters in this movie. Uh, Robert Forster as Max Cherry. Um, and one of the things that I said on Facebook when I was talking about the movie, uh, you know, Max Cherry is ordinary, regular guy. And I think that actually does work to his advantage. I think in Robert Forster, in my opinion, does a good job as the Max Cherry character. I tried to think about what other old actors could be. Um, and I thought, I you know you. what? If it was somebody more dynamic, like let's say, like if it was somebody who was more bombastic, I think that would have taken away who Max Cherry was. Max is very about his business. He is a bail bondsman. He is ready to handle business if needed. He got uh, Winston Tiny Zeus Lester, which is a Lister, excuse me, which is always a good idea because it's just like, I got backup. And he took a picture with him and he let people know he works here too. But what did y'all think of Max Cherry's character and as it relates to the little romance that he has with Jackie Brown and him being uh, essentially an accessory to her crimes? JT, we're going to start with you and your thoughts on Mr. Cherry. Max Cherry was serviceable like his revolver. History? Any additional thoughts that you want to add on that character? Mm. I felt, <laughs> what I else felt, is there to say about him? He was there, right? Um, 
Max Cherry, when I when I was looking at him, uh, going back into what we was talking about Quentin Tarantino, I felt like Max Cherry was what Quentin Tarantino was experiencing throughout the time that he was writing this movie. He was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to the store and buy a fucking album or cassette with a couple of good old soul singers. And I didn't know you liked the L Fox. Yeah, he was like, pretty oh, they're pretty good. And I right. <laughs> he's like, he didn't know that shit. So, um, but as far as so, you know, I will say this, when when Max saw Pan Griff for the first time coming out of prison, that's probably the first time he never heard a Delphonic song. It played in his head. Like yeah. just holy oh, shit. <laughs> what is this music? That's what I'm saying. Like he, just out of nowhere. He had a self Let's be clear. He had a self Pan Greer was was in her like 40s and her 50s. She still looked she still looked amazing in this movie. And it's just like, oh, I see why. Yeah. I see why yeah. she became who she was. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Any additional thoughts on uh, on Mr. Cherry? His so what what I was saying was that like I felt like he at points of time you could see that he didn't have no chemistry with Pam Greer at all. Um, and like the best one is like if you look at the very end when he kisses her, you can see that like yeah those those two weren't really about doing anything like intimate with each other throughout the whole time. Um, and it kind of came off that he was stale, but I feel like that was intentional for his character. And the reason being is because of the fact that he was supposed to be straight laced. He was supposed to be kind of a by the book kind of thing, you know, a uh, person. So I felt like it was an intentional thing that he was the character that he was by design. Yeah. She lucky she got a good straight laced, uh, not crooked as a barrel of snakes. Some of the lines that Sam was giving. You know, all them niggas crooked as a barrel of snakes. Like mm-hmm. she lucky she she got a good a good bell bosser because I ooh, I would have took that money and you would not have seen me. the movie would have been over. I left that mall. I am heading to Mexico and I am out for this picture. They would they would Max been, was they would be playing to black with the credits coming over and your car was he, off into the fucking. It was not that business. Like yeah. he took ten percent. Like she was just like Max, I please take more money. He was just like nah. He was a protagonist. My fee. He was a good guy. Like, that is a. That's the most decent thing that he that like he really did for that. He he showed that he cared. Um, we'll yeah. speed through. We'll speed run through a couple of other characters. Um, JT, if you were to describe Melanie, played by Bridget Fonda, what would you? Uh, what would be a, a, a good word to describe this woman? The the blonde head surfer. Guy. She was she was a a stoner surf broad who just didn't give a fuck really. <laughs> She, she was ran her mouth up. too much, and uh, yeah, she, she just it's an old her. Chinese proverb. Excuse me, old Japanese proverb. She was gross as fuck. Fuck around, you will find out. And she she kept going. She couldn't shut the fuck up in the mo- oh, yeah. She could. She just kept going. Like Lewis shouldn't have shot her. Lewis dumbass shouldn't have shot her. God <laughs> damn. <laughs> And that yes, was Sam Jackson was like, you 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 could you didn't hit it. <laughs> like, it was levels. She said okay, and that set him off. Like she, his she ass, was on that. His ass was over here, like, I don't hit women. <laughs> yeah. I got honor. I'm a shooter, but I ain't gonna hit her. We're not That's monsters, true. we're not savages. Uh Which history, funny. what would you That's how funny. would you describe uh Melanie? <laughs> so oh, you didn't hit her? So eleven <laughs> years later, Bernie Mac yeah. will verbatim say to Samuel Jackson, "I never wanted to hurt you. I wanted to kill you sometimes, but I never wanted to hurt you." <laughs> and you have Sam Jackson going backwards with this one. You could have hit her. And so I just thought that that's the first thing I thought of. I was like, "Bro, this is so yeah. big. This, this is that scene." Of uh, then yeah. later on in the house when he's got Max at gunpoint, he's just like. That fucking Lewis. You could have just hit her in the mouth. Could have hit her in the mouth. Yeah. So I could uh the soul the movie Soul Men came to mind when I seen that scene. But uh Lou uh Lewis, You dog motherfucker. Yeah, uh Melanie, she deserves she she deserved a lot of fucking shit. Um she definitely Jam- Jamel, that's actually the best exa- example. She was, if fuck around and find out, was a fucking person in the film. Yeah, it is. That's what she was. Because she was testing the fuck out of all of the patients the whole time. Right. They, Brad, this would have been... I think that Lewis would have never shot her if she would have... 
excuse me, so sorry. Um, if she would have just never like been late. She would have talked all that shit while in the mall. But if it wasn't for her being late initially and giving him that fight initially, I think that this would have been a different outcome. But yeah, no, she spent okay. the whole movie fucking poking, poking at him. He didn't know the direction of the poke man, didn't know the direction of the car. No, that nigga. He, he ain't out of jail too long. Yeah. And, and he was like, he, that mall probably was <laughs> very different by the time that he, by, uh, when he was in jail. Yeah. Locked it. Dumb. And she just Lewis is this way, Lewis is this way, is this mm-hmm. way. That is the most I'm not touching you type shit. And boy, it's it's like if your parent tells you not to mess with a dog. Yeah, like, just leave the dog alone. Don't yep. bother it. And you, as a child, hey, mess with it. She didn't learn. Right. that lesson. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Keaton, Batman, is in this movie as Agent Ray Nicolette and uh, Michael Bowen. As a uh, LAPD detective, uh, Vargas, uh, Michael Bowen. I most remember him. I most remember him for uh, Kill Bill as being Buck, the uh, the, the sexual assaulting uh, nurse orderly dude who uh, likes to likes to fuck and yeah. he does right. people things to 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 be a kid. But what y'all thought of the two cops, especially Michael Keaton? Um, this is late nineties Michael Keaton. He is energetic. He is. He is Michael Keaton as fuck in this movie. Just the Michael Keaton, like you, you, he is hilarious. The mannerism, which I think is Michael Keaton. Great guy. We're totally going to get a beer with him. Yeah. Um, I felt like Michael Keaton was uh, decent in here. Um, I, I felt like some points at times it was just like underutilized uh, for this character. There's a lot of people in this movie. Yeah. But um, at one point in time, I felt like his character looked like he was maybe a druggie or probably involved in the fucking like heist in a weird way for himself. But come to find out he was actually straight laced, I guess, at the straight end. Lace. But he was yeah, energetic. He, he was very energetic. If you've ever he seen the other guy. He was just like, and I was like, are you, did you take the cocaine? That's he is. Yeah, he was that's like. How, that's how he is though. So you, you stole fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, and like he was. A, Come on, boo-boo. you've seen the other guys. He had a lot of that same energy. Where you yeah. like, like where he he's he he he's got a certain way of acting, and I really yeah. appreciate him in this movie. And it's just like, man, he could have done more. But you know what? Sometimes you don't need a, a, too much hot sauce on your food. You just need a little yeah. bit. You know what, Michael? He, he added just right. He added just right. Um. Yeah. Simone, uh, the uh, the Martha Reese and the Vandellas, or uh, Supreme singing lady. Um, knowing how Robert De Niro is in real life, knowing how he uh, how he gets down, just to say, uh, Robert, he has a particular type of woman. That probably was the happiest day of filming that he's ever had, having this uh, black woman seductively sing sing a Supreme song in front of him. Because if you don't know, uh, Robert De Niro, nice sisters. And he was, he was he was probably happy as hell, just 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 relaxing, enjoying, soaking in that performance. Um, one more shout out, of course, um, and just last thing on um, on Michael Keaton, the way that he tells Jackie that Beaumont was killed is hilarious. He's like, "Oh, Beaumont knows you. What? Well, doesn't know any? He's dead." Like just so that sentence in the way that he acts, it really does make me appreciate how Michael Keaton acts. So I want to give some credit, and I want y'all to spotlight some stuff in the movie. Um, some of the direction in the movie, in particular, the opening sequence and some of the things in the movie. For me, in my opinion, time and aging are the primary things for this movie as it particularly relates to Jackie and Max Cherry. What do y'all think of those things, and are there any standout scenes, direction bits um, that you saw in this movie that y'all want to highlight? Uh, history and JT. Go ahead. You want uh, you want to go first, JT? He already told you to go. He said JT. Okay, all right. It's so, then JT. He said, yeah, he said both of them, bro. But that's okay. That's fine. Well, I switch it. I switch. I try and switch up the question. Okay, that's all right. Um. Wow. So with that, uh, um, when it comes to like standout scenes, I the only standout scene that I really fucking head was um 
I'm going to be honest, man. I really feel like this movie was not memorable for me uh, in a lot of ways. I felt like this was uh, kind of... I listened to a lot of conversations. I would say if I had to think about something that kind of made me think, and I was like, all right, this is cool, memorable, is the scenes with Beaumont in it. He had this got a really big, nice dialogue with Chris, Chris Tucker, and he puts him in the car, and then... um it made it look like he was going to go to, I think he said Chinatown at the time. And then... Koreatown. Koreatown, yeah. Co- Koreatown, deal this gun to, to, to yeah. Koreans. Yeah, and then he made the block around, and you just seen the scene. They did a really good job, because all you just seen was the actual... Um, the um, camera pan up, so it went up into the sky, and then you seen the actual light, uh, the actual lot that was right next to where it was already parked. And he made a block around and drove into the actual lot. And that's where you popped your boy Beaumont twice. And then the music came back on. Yeah, and the music came back on. Yeah, oh, that was fucking, that was, that was a cold blooded scene. So that was yeah. the time that I was like, Diggity. oh, he's an, antag- he's an antagonist in this one. So yeah. Come on now, that skull special. Yeah. Red, these are nice. I like exactly. the I like the camera mm-hmm. shot where they were uh, where um, Jackie came to Ordell's place, and they are start on one side looking in from the door, and then they flip the camera around the back of the couch to flip it outside and have them they're watching over there uh, have their conversation. Yeah, and so I kind of noticed yeah. to myself like every time I get bored with the film, Quentin Tarantino did a pretty good job of changing something up the way he would tell the story changed. So when uh, Beaumont was out there with Ordell, you know, they were looking up, you know, kind of from the the trunk and talking in the trunk. And, you know, I guess Quentin Tarantino always has a, you know, talking from the trunk scene or whatever for the Mm -hmm. most part. But it's a good shot. And, you know, when I'm watching these movies, I don't don't go watch a movie twice like I used to to really analyze it. First time, go watch the thing. Second time, try to look for everything else. But, uh, especially not with this two and a half hour movie. But I think that the camera tricks really kept the story interesting and it kept, it felt like Quentin Tarantino pushed the movie along at a pretty good pace, even though there was a lot to get, get to, you know, just kind of kept. And then, and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can understand what you were talking about in the chat saying that, you know, it don't feel like it's that long just because something is happening. And a lot of times it's just telling the story a different way. So when he was switching from Max and then Jackie and then back to Max and back to Jackie, as she walked down from the uh, the jail cell, you know what I'm saying? He kept coming over here, you know, and then now he get a little inkling and stuff like that. That seemed was, it took like a minute for her to walk all the way to him or whatever. <laughs> yeah. what like. But like they were really, they were basking in the moment. And Which so, I don't feel like you need that though. In in a two and a half hour movie, you don't need that scene where she's like looking like she's in distress walking to the mall. We we just didn't need no extra no extra explanation for why Max was doing whatever else he was doing for her. Though. Yeah, because we and, knew from that moment that section right there. Oh oh oh. And, yeah, you know, that's that's it. That's all you had to have, and everything else is an opportunity. But that that's also the the the, 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 the punishment of like. Quentin Tarantino putting so much dialogue in it is the fact of you already knew that he was going to do it because of the fact that he was very fond of her in some form of fashion. Mm. So you already kind of had the idea that he was going to do this thing because he liked her. And so uh, unless there was a change of like minds in some form of fashion where you seen instead Max is driving off into the sunset, taking that money somewhere else. I kind of didn't need the rundown of how he got the money after what he did with the money after he got out the dressing room. I mean, it was nice that he said goodbye and that's it. That's all I really needed. But the extra, like what almost minute to two minutes that could have been subtracted from the film, the move, the part where she was leaving the actual, uh, the store after getting the suit, I didn't need almost a minute and a half to two minutes of her just looking like she's transforming from being like really kind of stern to like distress. Just show me that she just freaked out. You know what I mean? And cut to scene that she's now running into Michael King's character. I, I disagree slightly with that because I do think it is important to, for me at least, I think it does a good job of showing how she's she's basically getting into character. It's similar to 
the scene in Pulp Fiction right before Jules and Vincent go into an apartment, the, the uh, opening apartment where mm -hmm. Jules says, let's get into character. I feel that that's a visual, it was a visual way of her showing, okay, I have to be portrayed that I'm stressed around Ray because if I, I, you know, I walk out there regular style and she's like, oh no, Melody, you know, I'm not distressed, I'm not panicking. And she also, I think she doesn't quite know who's all watching her, which is why she, when she exits the uh, dressing room, she kind of has a fragile look to her. But I do, I understand what you're saying. I, yeah, I no, saying. no, I just, I just, that, then, then we need, I, then we need to like utilize that scene more than just watching her go. It could have been, I do oh, think. Yeah. It you know, it's just like, instead of showing that like that, we need to show more than that, and you you underutilize that time. So I like. I mean, I will say, like JT, I can understand where you feel like, hey, this doesn't feel like three hours, but I don't. As a person who is not necessarily a fan of this movie, like you, I can see where, man, you just wasted three hours for me. That makes sense. Are you, two, you could have it down to two and a half? Two, two, two and two. a half, but I. I can understand, but yeah. for me, I think one of the like just one of those scenes that always yeah. does stand out is that opening because I think it does that again that representation of Jackie feels the world is passing her by. She's on the moving sidewalk, she's standing still, the world's going by her, and she she's kind of stuck in place and she doesn't have any. Yeah, any that's a fantastic real horror moment. Yeah. I think that's that opening is really good. Does a good job of executing that, and of course. Any scene that Ordell is in when he's interacting with someone else, it's always funny. I think the stuff that he does with Lewis, that's always classic because, again, Lewis is such a dumb bastard in this movie, and it's really weird seeing Robert De Niro be sunned in a role. Like, just completely, he is being sunned and being owned at every moment. That scene in the car, mm -hmm. where he's breaking down and he's piecing together. Sam Jackson, without words, he just pieces together Jack. My, together, they start figuring it out, and he's just like, "This stole my mind." And then that line when he shoots Lewis, what happens? Man, he used to be like it's just it is one of those moments which, like, that he realized his homeboy, his homeboy ain't shit. His old partner ain't shit, and I gotta get rid of him. I fucked up. I I, I had a bad draft, and so I, I that always stands out to me. But so, any final thoughts on the movie before we go into? With his broads, with his best friend, <laughs> bro, he he's just bad at picking oh, people. Man. So Simone, the, she took he had the girl in uh Compton who was basically uh strung out in the junkie. This is some repugnant shit. He had the country girl who didn't know no better, just fresh off the bus from Georgia. He had uh, Simone who made an executive decision like you know what, or Dell, he don't see me no more. I be wanting to perform. Fucking uh, stopping the name of love. I be wanting to perform some margaritas for him. He don't come back no more. I'm gonna take this ten G's and I'm out. Of course, fucking never. Just yeah. Uh, but before we wrap up, give our ratings. Any final thoughts on the movie, gentlemen? So actually, there was a, a joke uh, that I, I thought of, bro. The sex scene between Robert De Niro and Melanie. My wife got up, bro, in the middle of it, and she uh, she said, "Well, that was boring because it, it kind of just happened all of a sudden, right?" And I'm glad that it kind of happened all of a sudden. Um, That's because Melanie was kind of thotty. Yeah, but it just kind of. But the the whole scene itself, like I'm pretty sure, if you timed it, bro, probably you like thirty to forty five uh, yeah, yeah, minutes, yeah. minutes later. Yeah, it said three minutes later. Oh. Oh, really, it was like. <laughs> Maybe like twenty to twenty five seconds of like screen time of that, <laughs> and my wife got up and she said, "Well, yes. that's boring." Uh, and I said, "That's must be what his uh, new baby mama must have said while they was uh, making sure <laughs> making uh, the that's, new that's baby." That's mean. Look. That's a legend we talking about. God damn, yeah, that shit was Robert De Niro at the age of, at the age of seven just out here giving that Reggie the wind. Yeah, somehow yeah. getting them pregnant. Yeah. Damn. So with that, three minutes. That with our, Lewis okay. got hold in this movie. He, he got hold heavy in this movie. It was yeah. Amazing, so yeah, not not Robert De Niro's finest. It's just um, any final thoughts, JT? Any final uh, thoughts? Bridget Fonda, 
who played Melanie, is married to Danny Elfman. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That's all. Fantastic. Okay. So, <laughs> what's our... Uh... Any, any last thoughts, history? Um, no, I just wanted to give a quick... Uh, just some quick <laughs> trivia and why. Try. No, go ahead. You didn't try to let your ass reply to... <laughs> any thoughts? I thought you were just... I, no, I thought <laughs> that you were about to do it what... Uh, what's our breath. movie scale? The same breath I you thought, kept talking <laughs> I thought you were... No, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to catch you off. I thought you were about to say... Jamel, what's our rating system? And you were right. Oh, I didn't no. know that you had any final thoughts, but please. Oh, go no, right go ahead, Doug. Go ahead. Do you think? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do you think? No, I, no, I, 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 I forgot it. Now, right? Marcus, like, just, just, yeah, it was just so funny. It, it went over my head, Doug. You good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You got to so, check that replay. Quentin Tarantino. That was cold blooded. So right there. I didn't, it was unintentional. So, uh, Quentin Tarantino, uh, just some background stuff on the movie. These characters would appear in some other films, uh, specifically Ordell and Lewis. They would appear in a 2013 movie that's also based on uh, the movie Rum Punch. It is kind of a prequel. It's called Life of Crime. Uh, Most Death plays uh, Ordell and John Hawks plays uh, Lewis and Isla Fisher plays Melanie, which is weird because the movie's in the 70s, but eh, that's creative freedom, creative license anyway. Um, Quentin Tarantino actually wanted to cast Pam Greer in Pulp Fiction. Uh, she was going to, to be, and if you're familiar with Pulp Fiction, the character of Eric Stoltz, the drug dealer that John Travolta has, he wanted to cast her as the girlfriend of Eric Stoltz, the, the one that kind of gets yelled at, the one that helps revive, um, that helps uh, revive uh, Uma Thurman after, after she ODs. But he said, he didn't believe audience would find it plausible that Eric Stoltz would A, yell at her, and B, she would take that yelling. So he moved on. He's like, yeah, that's, I don't think Pam Greer would, would tolerate that. So he said after the success of uh, Pulp Fiction, Pam Greer, she was just like, eh, not expecting to hear from him. She showed up, had a read for Jackie Brown, and Quentin Tarantino had a whole bunch of uh, posters from her films, from Coffee, from, uh, from, uh, from, from Foxy Brown. Just like that's just who he is. He again hates the culture, not necessarily appreciates it, but she was just like, Oh, I thought you were just doing this to kind of put on. But no, he really does have an appreciation for her as an actress. And that's something that I did want to note. Also, the character that uh, was played by Robert De Niro, Lewis, uh, actually, Sylvester Stallone, he claimed that he turned down the role. Uh, he couldn't write Robert for Newman. Robert Newman, Gene Hackman, and uh, John Saxton were all offered the role of Match Cherry before uh, the choice was made for Robert Forster. Gene Hackman would have been interesting. Uh, Paul Newman, shouts out to him, rest in peace. In fact, all three of these dudes are dead, rest in peace. But interesting casting choices uh, for potential for, uh, potential roles. So with that, we've come to the end of our movie discussion, and it's now time to rate Jackie Brown. 1997, Quentin Tarantino's third directorial outing. On the historical voices from each side, we have a five-point scale. Winner, edger, slumper, sleeper, and duster. For Jackie Brown, JT, what say you? What rating would you give this movie? For the constant good dialogue and the uh, interesting camera tricks. I definitely think this movie was more than a slumper. Uh, didn't really get to the end of it, so I feel like I, you know, it, it didn't complete the whole rating. So I'm not going to give it the edge of which I think. I think I might have to stick with a slumper uh, because I really wasn't excited to finish the rest of it that so much so that I put off everything else that I had to do today. Uh, yeah, I'm going I'm to go ahead and give this one uh, ye old slumper. Okay. Even though I, I'm not right sure. Ahead, history, what say you? What say you? What say you? Um, I, I'm gonna give this uh, a sleeper. Um, I think that like um, uh, Odell did a really good job. Samuel Jackson's character did a, a good job, but I felt like this movie was for Samuel Jackson. I don't feel like it was for anybody else. Um, it showed, uh, it showed so much range for. Him. But I feel like there, there's been a lot of movies that we've watched and we've kind of critiqued. 
And um, you couldn't always lean on that one person sometimes, especially when this film is supposed to be surrounded around a, a group of people. Um, but I can't rate, I, I feel like I'm rating this out of bias because I don't like heist movies. I don't like movies like this. Uh, so I, I watched it for cinematography wise. I can see where Doing it's all been. the Oceans movies next month. Dog, we are not doing fucking ocean, bro. I will absolutely just like, sh- you know what, dog? Here's my thing. Uh, I will watch a movie and give it a shot, dog. And I will watch this whole. I will watch a bad movie, bro. Watch it through and then be able to give an actual educated Wait. reason why I, uh, I like and dislike it. Yes, I will definitely do that and give an educated re- reason why I don't like that film. And so with that, as far as the ocean films, I haven't been interested in them because they're heist movies. I am Rick from Rick and Morty. So I will I would be like, man, this is bullshit. This is stupid. This is stupid. This whole fucking film. Uh, yes, drunk and the smartest fucking man in the universe. Yes, I will say that. Uh I am not the smartest man in the universe. Um, yes, I could be miserable watching the fucking ocean film. Yes, you're correct. So with that, uh, this film is a it's a sleeper for me, man. Um, I wanted to try to give it a slumper, but I can't. I am, of course, I'm going with an edger, I think, for the performances in the movie, especially Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, me, it's maybe third best um, for his Tarantino performances, but that is, like, that's a high bar for what he's done. Correct. Uh, with his movies, like, it, I can't say he's, it's better than Steven and Django. Because it's it's so Steven is in. Nothing is touching jewels in Pulp Fiction, but I think he does an excellent job in this. I think Pam Greer is good. I like and I enjoy the cast. I enjoy the dialogue. And I enjoy how different it is in a lot of ways from Terrence Mills movie. There is no big shootout or big fight scene where multiple people die. This is probably the least like visually violent movie that he's had. Like. That's where our dogs more violent, like uh, Pulp Fiction's more violent. And I think it is is definitely, if you're not a Quentin Tarantino fan, this is probably the easiest way for you to uh, enjoy a Tarantino movie. There are aspects of this movie that I really enjoy, and this is the best black woman that he's put on. Maybe Vivica in Kill Bill, because she was a badass fighter, but this is a movie that I always get a pleasure out of. It's not my favorite Tarantino movie. Um, Django, because you know, uh, I'm, I'm always gonna cheer for a slave uh, going out yeah, there but, and in business. Kill but, Bill, in my opinion, it's it's highly entertaining. It is fun. Um, Pulp Fiction is what it is. Reservoir Dogs is dope. But for me, it's a movie that I feel should get a little bit more attention than it actually does. And I hope that people will, will, will give it a shot. Um, if you've seen this movie, um, give it a shot. Give it a shot. You know, go through it, watch it, and formulate your own opinion and let us know on Facebook. Um, and that's going to do it for our movie review session for the week. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, it's your pick. There. It's your it pick, is your choice week, which means you will be able to decide what we watch next week. Um, throw the suggestions on our Facebook page at Historical Voices. If you're a member of our wrestling uh, Facebook page, go ahead and throw them there. Throw them on the island of irrelevancy. Hit up me on Instagram at Jamel727 or on the uh, Historical Voices HBFE podcast on um, Instagram. Let us know what you want us to consume to wrap up the month of April because starting in September, history is going to be contributing some picks. We're going to actually start diving into some TV shows. We have, uh, I have an idea of some episodes that we may watch on my particular week. Who knows what we're going to get into? Who knows what we're going to watch? But please let us know what you want us to consume. Um, I may be doing All In as a pay-per-view review. I may. I may not. Chris Jericho doing a live Fozzy concert. Um, It definitely dives my enthusiasm for watching that show. Uh, That that feels real 100% rat ass. But regardless, um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And uh, history, please. Allow us to consume JT and uh, let's, let's get into the voice of reason and let's take us home. Gotcha. Uh, with that, yeah, that, that Fozzie performance definitely sounds like a piss break with music in the background. Um, I'd be pissed off. Yeah. I honestly uh, would be pissed off if a 
fucking. I paid my hard on on her money to see this. Yeah, wrestling. to oh, see some. Yeah, to see Chris Jericho Jericho this, this, this random. That's guy. almost like. Yeah. That's like when WrestleMania 25 happened in a fucking Kid Rock concert broke out. I would have wanted a refund. I'm like, nigga, I don't want to see him. No, I, 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 I didn't pay. I didn't pay for that. You, you have yeah. woefully misjudged your audience. Yeah, you <laughs> made me pay seventy dollars for this shit. God damn, fuck. <laughs> we are right. <laughs> Yeah, right. You anyway, said recommended twenty. Uh, yeah, that was you were still paying for that shit. You were not watching that on Peacock for five bucks. Uh, Chris Jericho albums go straight styrofoam. Yes. So with that, man, uh, make sure that you get uh, you check us out on wherever you get your audio acoustical pleasures from. So that's a Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, wherever you get your podcast from. Definitely check us out. Make sure that you hit that five star rating. It does actually help us out. It actually helps us get uh, more discovered and also um, uh, help us be able to actually get kind of discovered a little bit faster as well. And do the same thing on YouTube as well as also Facebook. Like us and then also subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can know when we are. I know sometimes we'll be sitting there saying, yo, we're going to be on 10 15 and we show up at like 10 20. Still hit that notification bell so you can know that we are, man. Because we, we, we was just being generous, giving you an extra piss break right before you sit there with us and enjoy a long ass drink of a show like ourselves that we have. So uh, make sure that you check us out, man. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Uh, join our community, man, so you can be able to socialize with us, uh, with you, man. So let's make it as fun as possible. We, we've been kind of popping off a little bit. Uh, Jamel still hasn't responded to my my question about how he feels about Booker T with uh, Hogan yeah, and and also on top of that, like uh, we've said, happy birthday to JT on in, out of a relevancy, man. Check us out, bro. Uh, we're a good podcast and we we got some good community members out there. Um, fast shouts out to Wakia, Andrew, Candy. Um, and so many other people that's actually is part of our community as well. So that is, again, on Facebook, his, uh, Historical Voices from the East Side, as well as also Island of Irrelevancy Podcast. Um, Island of Irrelevancy Podcast will be next week at 9.30, right, Jamel? Next week, Wednesday, at uh, 9.30. Yeah. And also join us on Twitter and Instagram on the Historical Voices from the East Side Podcast. Now, with that... Um, we go through a lot of trial and errors, man. We have some wins. We have some losses. We have some um, gains. And we have some, I guess you would say, detractors in life sometimes. When we feel like we kind of lost and we feel like the ashes are coming and we try to figure out what's on our uh, left. It's this time. That's what I'm doing, man. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the... I was just pointing as like, it's, it's JT's time. It's yeah. I'm, I'm... <sighs> on your, when you have to say... On your your side, I guess. Damn, you made made me mess up my my. Hey now, look, I, this this week's voice of reason. Yes, do your voice of I reason. I want to talk to you all about <laughs> preparation. So you know, I'm an Eagle Scout. Now, then, the Boy Scout motto is "Be prepared." And based off of the Maui wildfires, I started thinking. You know what? I really should edit my go bag. For those of you who aren't familiar with this preparedness tactic, a go bag is something that you could just grab and go. So if there's an emergency, you can grab it and get the fuck out of Dodge before anything happens. Or maybe so you can get a good parking spot wherever you're going to end up. So I wanted to talk a little bit about things that you should put in your go bag and things to consider when you create one. Because I think everywhere should have a go bag. Uh First, if you have a, an emergency that pushes you out of your house that you are ever displaced from, you need to consider what kind of emergency that is. Are you going to be able to come back to your house? If you're not, well, you know, you, you you got limited time to grab everything you can before the poison or the gas or whatever the frick comes up. But if you only got a limited amount of time and you got a go bag already with a change of clothes in it, you're good for one more day till you find shelter or a shower. But you also have to consider if you're going to have a place to go when once you're displaced from your house. So if you don't have a place to go, can you go in your car? Because then at least you have some shelter from the elements. You know what I mean? So if, if you have a friend's house you can go to, if you ever get displaced from your house, that's the time to see who your real friends are. Where they let you come over and sleep on the couch. They got a guest room that they give you, you know. Feel free to impose on people if you actually have an emergency. Because then you can tell who your real friends are. But if you don't have any shelter, then you really got to think about bringing some survival tools. You got to bring you some rope, some tarp, something to keep the, the elements off of you. And you also got to make sure that you got something to eat. 
if you got kids, then you're probably going to want to bring some snacks for them too. Maybe some games, cards, or something like that. Put that in your go bag. And just think about, you know, getting getting a duffel bag with a couple of things in it just in case shit hits the fan. What could possibly hit the fan in your area? See, around here, it's a flood. Luckily, uh, there's a giant dune on the other side <laughs> of between me and the big water. But if anything ever really popped off, we'd probably just be able to go to a relative's house. But if you don't have that option, you got to make sure to plan for the car. Can you get a, Maybe you put a crock pot with a little, you know, uh ac charger in there so you can actually cook some stuff up in there that's what my sister had to do when she was without power down in texas you know what i'm saying so I'm telling y'all go go check out your go bag go put one together get you a flashlight maybe a multi-tool uh, uh you know a swiss army knife or something like that and be prepared one of the things that's so great about being prepared is it gives you a little bit of peace for the future knowing that you've already done something to, to help schedule your success, especially in case of emergency. And who thinks about emergencies? That's one of the reasons they're so bad is because you're generally not prepared for them. So by preparing a little bit, it'll set your mind at ease. It'll allow you to rest a little easier, knowing that you did something smart and you were prepared for an emergency situation. Craft a go bag, y'all. As the only person that has uh, survived an actual natural disaster, I, I guess. What would you put in your go bag? Um, Looking back in hindsight. So let's talk about your actual natural disaster. Um, so if, I think I've stated The ocean got mad and wind happened. Um, the ocean did not get mad. Right? It was the river, but that's okay. Uh, that's it, it was it was the a Mississippi country. River. So um, then that was by failed government services. Um, and that's not specifically like the U.S. government. is more so the local government was corrupt and did not give a fuck about its own people. Oh, um, you mean to tell me that Louisiana had corrupt? What? Bro, yeah. Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Louisiana had I'm all. just saying. They've been funneling folks, money into their own coffers instead yeah. of distributing uh, them. So, it is comical the way that uh, how some Louisiana governors are corrupt. It's it's, it's, it's wow. Um, with that, I would say the biggest important thing that you need to have in your go bag is a uh, access way to be able to get to that family member that's outside of your natural disaster. Um, the reason why a lot of people have failed, uh, first off, have some money in your pocket and have some financial kind of stability in some way at uh, some backup. So if you can have your debit card that actually fucking works and has a nice little bank account attached to it, that'll be the be uh, biggest thing. Um, because a lot of people could not afford and they stayed inside of their actual houses because of the fact that it was actually cheaper to stay inside your house. Um, the next thing is also on top of that, have great communication with the people who you're going to actually um, travel to and try to make sure you're prepared for that evacuation prior to that. Now, granted, if you had a natural disaster like an earthquake, that'd be totally different. So I get a gold bag in certain cases. I would just say that like, have your best mindset of knowing being prepared for those type of events would be to practice drills and having to actually have kind of like a routine of how we go. I think that that's more important than the actual bag itself. And the reason being is because of the fact that if I know how to get outside of my actual, uh, my surrounding or that, that kind of like failing and faulty area, I guess you would say, that's going to be significantly more important than that bag that I'm holding on to. Um, so I would say have a routine, have a, uh, have a way that you actually practice for those type of situations, because it's never going to be technically the same every single time, but being able to have that actual kind of mindset of readiness of like, Hey, all right, we got this, uh, this flood that's possibly coming. Are you practicing learning how to swim? Are you practicing, um, your mindfulness when it comes to like learning, about uh, what's a good exit point or where's your levees at or something like that. And that goes into you learning about your house. So for example, are, is your house sitting off the ground because of the fact that there's possibly like sinkage somewhere else and there's a lot of those type of things going on around there. Um, is your house faulty? Um, there's a lot of people who got stuck in their actual roofs and could not ex uh, escape out there. Uh, I'm sorry, their roofs or their ceilings and could not get out. There's a lot of things. But the bag is not a problem. I would just say a lot of it, just kind of that awareness prior 
and having those routines prior. That's would be beneficial. If you're talking about a natural disaster, a bag may be a drop in the in the ocean. Yeah. But if you're talking about some shit that just goes down that you're not prepared for, having Correct. an extra set of clothes and shoes, maybe some deodorant, yeah. toothbrush, yeah. that can make you a lot more presentable to somebody who could even help you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't knock it till you got one, to brother. I tell um, you, one day, I, man, I can't relate to the whole natural yeah. disaster thing where I'm at because Arizona is, is hot is our disaster. Yeah. Um, I do an air conditioner or yeah. be prepared to die because you fucked without that. So, yeah. um, my advice: uh, make sure you have a good melee weapon, a baseball bat. That's a classic choice, a blunt object, and uh, you know what? Carry your shotgun. It, yeah. it, it, Always helps. That's exactly. uh, always helps. Rob somebody of their supply. Rob somebody who has the go bag. <laughs> that way, they, they prepare. So, and I also, um, just a quick observation. I thought the voice of reason is where we kept the show off. We're still alive. Yeah, we about to end this right now. So, yeah. with that, Ben, it's been 17 years. We disrespect JT's time. And- no, we didn't. You, we didn't disrespect this time, man. We, we, you, well, you stopped me in the middle of me introducing this time, but that's okay. JT is the close. The show, uh, and we are still going. That's okay. That's it's like okay. Saturday Night Live, just keep going after the last joke. Good night, everybody. Have a good, have a good night, bro. I'm just saying, you discredited the fact that an actual person who survived a natural disaster for three days. Okay, go on. For three days, don't you wish you had a bag with a change of clothes? In it? House for three fucking days. Yeah. That clothes didn't yeah. matter for goddamn day. Yeah. And when I came up into Michigan, maybe some cars, lovely some people solitaire. who donated to me. So, no. Yeah, I had all the shit that I needed.